All right. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Well, we're back. We got about 10 minutes until the start of the third quarter. And I was able to get all of the um, halftime score updates. So the little ticker at the bottom should be pretty accurate now with where all the teams are sitting. I guess we can quickly take a look at bridge winners and go through some unusual results. Let me let me just let's see. How is this gonna do? Um can I scroll? Okay, yeah, that's that's good. We can scroll. So I'm just gonna leave the little stuff over here for a second. We can scroll through, but Nickel is doing quite well. I mean, they got off to a big lead. They still have a lead. Fleischer's way ahead. Zhang against Wolfson. Um, Wolfson may be a little bit of a weaker team. They do have, uh, everyone can see this. So Ber Berkowitz and Mechstroth, obviously a strong pair. Um, <clears throat> Wolfson, a little bit of a weaker client. Um, playing with Steve Garner. And then David Gold, Peter Crouch from England. But Zhang, as sometimes is the case with some of these um, foreign, especially like Chinese teams, where most of them don't have good seeding points, but they might have some fairly strong players. Obviously, they have Berman and Patton, who are, I think they're Israeli, but they're quite good as a partnership. And I'm not familiar with the rest of them. Leibowitz has a close match currently against Dyson, although Leibowitz will be sitting out the next set. Hammond is ahead in their match against Bernal. Um, Kane, my boy Tim, is doing quite well against Milner. Rombo, the four, well, no sponsor. So that's kind of a big deal on this team. They're just playing four-handed. Um, but they got a very weak seed, 20th. I kind of expected them to be much higher with Aachen and Welland in there. Quite a strong team. And then <clears throat> Milne, Hans is absolutely destroying Milne. Again, another four-handed team, no sponsor here, uh, I think. Um, but they're doing quite well. Milne um, and Coots will be out, so the second I guess second half of this team, which looks like Kolesnik, Yeku, I, I have no idea who this is, Safia. I've seen the name before, but Yeku Tieli and Rosenberg Platnik will be in for Milne. Maybe they can make a comeback. Surprisingly, Switzerland and Lean is a very close match. I mean, Switzerland, the Bermuda Bowl winners, and obviously a very strong team. So Lean holding their own. <clears throat> Meta Farrell asks, why are Nickel first seed? The recent performances don't seem to deserve it. I think, so I was a little surprised by that as well. Um, a lot of seeding is based on performance in recent NABC events. And I don't know if this is the case now, but the way it used to work is that the only thing that mattered for seeding points in the Vanderbilt, Spingold, and probably now the Solways, these big 64 team matches, is um, <clears throat> your, your placement in those previous matches or those previous events for the past three years. So if Nickel has done consistently well in Vanderbilt, Spingold, and Solway in the past three years, then that might earn them more points. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. Like maybe they, they don't always win, but they like frequently make it to the final four and that earns them a lot of seating points. <clears throat> they haven't even done consistently well in those events. I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we can look this up. Well, let me let me go through other the other side of the bracket first. And then if we have a bit of time, how are we doing on tables? We still don't have any of your graph tables up. Um, 
So Rosenthal McAllister. Now, I'm not going to say that like this match is definitely going to be close by the end of this quarter. Rosenthal will be out. So the four players on the Rosenthal team that are going to be competing will be Lincoln, Helgamo, Bakke, and Brogland, um, three of which finished second in last year's Bermuda Bowl. <clears throat> and the fourth one being the choice partner of Geyer Helgamo for international competition. So <laughs> it's... It's going to be an uphill battle for McAllister to pull out a win, even though the match looks close, but we will be following that. Um, and then there's Street Tulin. Street will be probably cruising to a victory there. I'm disappointed. I mean, I'm happy for my boy Joe Gru and Brad Moss to be winning this match, but I was hoping for a little bit of young blood here. I don't know much about Ash, Stephen Ash. Uh, maybe the sponsor of the team, or maybe there's no sponsor. I have no idea. Um, but I know that this team has played together for a little while now. All of the partnerships are well-established. Um, the two female players, I think, play for the Serbian national team. That's a guess. Um, but they seem to actually be competing and doing fairly well, I would say, in a lot of these big team matches at NABCs. I remember that they played up against Fleischer or something and held their own for a while um, at one of the previous nationals. And then, of course, uh, Thiessen, Neeson, and Van de Poverd are three members of the recent junior world championship team from the Netherlands. So a lot of good rising talent on the team, for sure. Um, a little bit disappointing for me because I think I picked them pretty far into the event in my bracket. Um, <clears throat> Juicer and Hoskins looks pretty close. Goodman and Hill is a tie after a half. Now, they're both six-handed teams, and I expect that the sponsors are going to be sitting out for the remainder of these matches. Ola and Mikkel Rimstedt obviously are the partnership that, it, well, if we had been watching the Swedish team trials like a week or two weeks ago, whenever I was doing commentary for that, they pre-qualified and left in the dust a bunch of fairly strong players from Sweden who were fighting for the remaining two spots. So really solid pair from uh, that area of the world. I think they have a good chance to pull the upset over Goodman, who's the higher seed. Bathurst is doing quite well against Goldberg. Um, and then the 16 seed versus 17 seed matchup, a face we haven't seen very, very much recently, Eric Rodwell is on the Simpson team down here. And Bailey is currently head by six in that matchup. Bailey is playing four-handed though. So the sponsor with um, William Bailey playing with Dan Corbel. They're going to have a lot of work to do if they want to hold on to that six imp lead, but obviously the three non-sponsors on the team are very, very strong players. Josh Don and Jan Jansma have been playing together for quite some time. Um, Korbel is now a U.S. resident, but um, in the past was, I would say, probably Canada's strongest player for a number of years. So, and I know nothing about the sponsor of the team. <clears throat> But anyway, that's the update. So Matt says that Nickel lost in the second round of the spin gold and lost in the first round of the salt weight. Now, that would have been the round of 32 for the salt weight, right? Because I remember the salt weight, we didn't have a round of 64. Um, I mean, there were like pre-qualifications, but um, <clears throat> those would not be good results. <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> But it might depend on what they did in this event last year. Let's see. Vanderbilt Bridge NABC something. Vanderbilt Trophy. Here we go. Nin uh, 2023, the winners were Wolfson. Wow, really? I don't remember that. But that's a big result for them. Yeah, the last time I see Nickel on here is 2019. They were second. 
2018, they were second. 2017, they were first. So the last two years, they have not finished first or second. Then there were two years of pandemic where they weren't able to play. I guess I can pull this up. Um, so last time we saw them, they were here with Eric Rodwell on the team. Another time they were second with Eric Rodwell on the team. They won with Rodwell on the team. Maybe that's the difference. <laughs> you don't see any, no nickels down here and Rodwell was banned. Hmm, awfully suspicious, don't you think? He was the reason they were winning all along. Well, maybe we'll find out. It would be nice if we could get a Rodwell Mextroth matchup. I don't know if anyone's ever seen that. They played together for so long. <laughs> Cheaters? No. No. <clears throat> uh, where are we? All right, Vugraf. So, we will be following the continuation of Rosenthal against McAllister. I know that there's a lot of fan favorites on the McAllister team. We do have two other streamers or content creators out there who are playing. They're playing together, in fact. I don't know if that's a normal thing. I, I think um, Dan mentioned to me that they were a new partnership. I mean, I'm sure they've known each other for years. They may have played in some events here and there, but... <clears throat> You heard Fisher underwent major plastic surgery. <laughs> like the the uh, Loton Fisher kind of Fisher. I <laughs> seems unlikely. Um, I actually don't know what happened to them. I mean, obviously they're like banned from playing, and I've I've never seen them around um, for a while, but. Like, I don't know if they were sent to prison or if they just, you know, got effectively blacklisted from playing in bridge events and had to find a different career or something. Um, like, Lotan Fisher, I think, could easily bounce back. He was the brains of the operation. Well, as, as far as I know, I mean, I, I have no idea where... Um, the idea to cheat came from, or like who was the one that came up with the signaling method, but Fisher was actually a good bridge player, um, and Schwartz was fairly weak. Ooh, it looks like we have new matchups, which might be indicative of they're going to choose the three matches which are closest. Good news for us, we do still get to watch the McAllister team play because their match is fairly close. But I wonder if that means we're going to get Bailey Simpson Hill against Goodman, or Goodman against Hill, I guess I should say. Higher seed first. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, Rosenthal McAllister. But we will wait for that table. Cheaters are usually very strong in their field. I, th I don't believe that. I think that's a little bit of a public opinion thing that some of the cheaters, like supporters, tend to take. Um. <clears throat> ah, thank you, Mark. Mark says that seating points go back 10 years. So that could be a good explanation for why Nickel um, is doing well. I thought it was three years, but maybe it's just that the most recent three years are most important or something. But that, that does help out. What did the cheating pair do of Fisher Schwartz? I think, you know, I should probably make a chat command for that. But effectively, like they were passing signals about um, all sorts of things, like how good their hands were, both during the bidding and during the play. They would tell their partner what to lead at trick one based on um, the position of the board. So they, they always played north-south 
which meant they could handle the board. Um, and behind screens, when you take the tray off the table, you have to re-put the board back down. Yeah, look at this, we do get to see Goodman Hill. So I think they are picking out the three match, or yeah, three matches, six tables that are gonna be closest coming into the set. But we will stick around and wait for the Rosenthal McAllister. Um, table, I guess. Oh, are we here? We're here. Yeah, cheating does make the game a lot easier. And on that note, it's time for me to say goodbye to Twitch chat and YouTube chat. Um, I'm still taking a look at you. So if you do have questions in the middle of broadcast, I will be here. But let's head on into the table with Willenk and Helgamo. Um, Rain Weingarten, uh, and I will be back in just a bit. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third quarter of play between Rosenthal and McAllister. We have a very close match on our hands. I apologize for being a little bit late. Looks like the Bugraph tables took a while to get set up and we're in the middle of the first hand of play. I will try and get caught up a little bit to what's been going on on the first board. But I'm here, Brady Bot. I, once again, don't believe I will have a co-caster for today, but I will be back tomorrow with my regular co-caster, Craig Ganser. <clears throat> East appears to be getting end played into leading away from that King Jack of Clubs in West Sand. So I, I'm sorry that I haven't been able to follow the play all that carefully with what's happened, but it looks like either East might have been mistiming the play and not realizing that um, he needed to lead a club up towards that King Jack earlier for a guess, or maybe there was just nothing he could have done. Um, but it looks like North South have defended very well getting to this spot where uh, Declare is going to be end played into giving up a trick. And as such, East decides, I I'm not even going to rough and dummy. I don't want dummy to be end played, so I'm just gonna duck the heart trick over to North. Now with the Ace of Clubs still in, um, <clears throat> that is going to be three spades going down one. Feels like probably a pretty nice result for North-South. Although we'll see what happens in the other room, but that has to be a good start to the set for North-South being able to maneuver their way to a set on that contract that declare otherwise looks like he only had four losers off the top, a club with both club honors on side, two trump tricks, and a diamond trick. But here we are, board two, East passes in first seat, and South does get to open the bidding with a diamond. I think once again, all four players at the table are playing a generally natural system. I, many, <clears throat> many months ago, I took a, a little bit of a look at the North-South system card. Um, so there, there are a couple of wrinkles that we'll need to be familiar with as we move through the day. And so there could be some artificial artificiality in some of the actions, but for the most part, I think they're just playing a pretty standard two over one style system. <clears throat> At least standard for this level of competition, I should say. Diamond of spade, south three bids and no trump, of course. Um, not good enough to reverse to two hearts and you just don't rebid five card suits. North raises to three now. So West on opening lead. I mean, a club looks like the most attractive lead from West's hand. 
that would be one method of trying to set up a number of tricks for your side if your partner happens to have the jack. Or, you know, maybe if you get lucky and your partner has the 10, that could be good enough to set up quite a few club tricks. So he does lead a low club. And how is Declare going to do in this contract? That seven of clubs is going to be a big menace because East-West will be able to set up three club tricks. Ace of diamonds offside, despite the 3-3 diamond split, declares in actually quite a bit of trouble here. I mean, even if the ace of diamonds was onside, he might still be in trouble. Um, he doesn't have great communication between the north-south hands. So while he can use the ace of clubs to take a diamond finesse and the ace of spades to take a diamond finesse, that either means he's going to end up stranding the king of spades in north's hand, or if he caches that spade king, he sets up quite a few tricks for the defenders. So that might mean that Declare kind of needs the jack-10 doubleton of diamonds to drop. That would be you know, one thing that he could play for, just leading the king, queen, and diamonds out of hand, hope that you get the miracle jack-10 doubleton. Um, alternatively, I guess he could hope that the jack of hearts is an entry, play for like the queen doubleton of hearts, for example. That would give him the extra entry he needs to north's hand. But he is in a lot of trouble. So a club comes back to the queen, and West, of course, can continue that king of clubs, pinning the nine and setting up his own seven. The diamond discard from east is going to give Declare some pause. You know, once again, he was probably sitting here hoping for some method of re-entering North's hand an extra time to take two diamond hooks against ace potential ace third. But now he might have to resort to an alternative plan. I wouldn't be surprised if he runs the nine of diamonds. I mean, it would be a little bit strange for East to pitch a diamond from jack 10 fourth as well. So uh, Declare probably believes that he's somewhat cooked at this point. Um... <clears throat> Seven of clubs caches, West switches to hearts. And after king of diamonds and a diamond, he will end up down one. So after what I would say was a good board for Rosenthal, this feels like a little bit of a pull back in the right direction for McAllister. Probably going to be a flat board. I mean, even it's even possible that Declare might end up down two on a bad day. We could see that. Um, but it always feels good to beat your opponents when they bid a vulnerable game. We do see five imps coming through on the first board for Rosenthal, so they've extended their lead now up to seven. Three spades was made in the other room by, it looks like, Brogeland was sitting at the helm declaring that one. South with a 15 count here gets to open a no trump, strong no trump. I believe they play 15 to 17. Maybe Al or Michael or someone at the table could correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I think that's what their card says. West gets to overcall two diamonds, showing a single suited hand with one major. Oddly enough, 
this two diamond overcall over a no trump, I think a lot of people refer to it as multi, um, or the no trump defensive system is something like multi landy, uh, where two diamond shows one major. Everyone, and so many players in the US play this two diamond overcall showing a single suited major, yet almost none of them play a two diamond opener showing a single suited major, which is kind of amusing if you think about it, because it's a very similar style of bid. Double by North is just kind of like showing some values. I think Pass by East shows diamonds. I know that this East-West partnership is fairly new, and it's possible they might not have discussed this. But normally, as East, you would want a way to be able to play in two diamonds if your partner happened to pick off your, like, Jack-10 seventh of diamond suit, and you're like singleton singleton in both majors. Um, but West with seven hearts and only one diamond, of course, does run to two hearts, which passes back around to South, who balances with two spades. So East-West haven't exactly dodged a bullet here, but I think North-South are kind of setting the tone that We've seen you earlier in today's matches. We've been watching on Vugraph. Hopefully they haven't been watching me, but <laughs> um, hopefully they've been watching uh, some of the action at least and have heard from their teammates that East-West have been fairly aggressive in the bidding and there have been opportunities to punish them if they, um, which one of which happened in the previous set that we were watching Steve Rain over in the East seat decided to bid a couple of times with an 18 count having opened and Brogland and Bakke were very quick to double him in a no trump. So after Sat's two spade bid, Helgamo decides that ace doubleton of hearts might give his side enough of a chance to make a no trump contract. He tries three now. They have, in a sense, missed their spade fit, but Helgamo probably looking at his hand and thinking that, hey, maybe partner has queen doubleton or queen third of hearts, and in no trump, that card might take a trick, whereas in a spade contract, that card won't. I think Wilenkin is going to be thrilled to see this dummy. He has two hearts. And, well, now that the King of Spades has popped up, he's got uh, five spade tricks and two clubs off the top. The four spades looks like it wouldn't have provided much challenge either to declare on this layout at the very least. Uh, the club splitting, the King of Spades on side, spades splitting. Declare would have taken plenty of tricks in that contract. But three no trump was also quite comfortable. There doesn't seem to be much to do at this point with the heart stoppers knocked out other than run the spades and hope that the clubs split. We might be seeing a claim fairly soon. In fact, that's probably exactly what's going on. So this will be 11 tricks for Declare. Five spades, four clubs, and two hearts.
I say that, but the longer that we wait for a card to be played or for a score to be entered, okay, there it is, 460. I was getting teased by the VUGRAPH operator that Olenkin was seeing something I wasn't, which frequently happens. <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it past him. But I would say three fairly down the middle boards to start the set. Um, nothing too exciting going on in the auction. Hey, Michael. Hello, how are you doing? Good, glad to have you joining me. Figured this would be easier than trying to type. <laughs> that is certainly true. Won't have a lot of sessions to do because I'm heading to Louisville tomorrow, but. Sorry, I'm just getting some earphones in. I, I don't know if you had feedback on your end, but I know that sometimes people complain. So now we're all good, no technology issues, as you were saying. So most people, I think, nowadays use that two clubs when partners open a club, opponent overhauls a no trump to show the majors. Mm -hmm. um, and that must be what's going on here because he has the majors in his bid two clubs, uh, especially in this era where one club opening bids have become more and more uh, suspect as far as the length of clubs that they're promising. Yeah. Uh, having a hand that wants to raise two clubs is uh, less likely than having a hand that wants to compete in the majors. Right. The, the other op option would be to use two di or two of the other major to show both, or two of the other minor to show both majors. Um, and in here, yeah. uh, Gare has done something really good by jumping to three spades with uh, good shape and, and good texture, and that'll allow North-South to bid four spades. Now, all that remains is for them to figure out a way to make it. Yeah, it does. I mean, on the surface, there's only two losers, but not a lot of winners. Declare is going to have to find quite a few on a cross rough. And I think he should be able to do so. Yeah, he has good spade spots, which help out a lot. Right. Can rough things high and still be able to draw trumps. Uh, probably could lose two diamonds in a heart or maybe just two diamonds. Yeah, the king of clubs falling is going to help Declare out quite a bit, I think. I mean, Declare can just play it on a complete cross rough, I guess. Uh, that seven of spades might... I don't think the seven of spades comes into play because you can rough two diamonds high and clubs low. Yeah, De Declare yeah. can definitely cross rough enough tricks. The question is... One heart low and the rest of them high. So he Declare, if the defense doesn't lead trumps, Declare can score all of his and score 11 tricks that way. Yep. Yeah, so a trump switch now is going to force Declare to lose one of those tricks. He'll be able to win the spade, cash two aces, and then cross rough high mostly high for um, 10 tricks from here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Someone is asking about the failures to alert. They do uh, have alert at the uh, two, um, have alertable bids. Uh, the ViewGraph operator seems to have just not put them in. Yeah. Usually we, we will see the alerts and, and when you play back the sets, uh, I always find it very helpful when the alerts are, are in there because I want to know what the opponent's bids mean. Of course, of say. course, yeah. So um, shame on you, you rough operator, put in that alert of two clubs. <laughs> They've been doing a pretty... I, they haven't been doing a great job of sticking in the alerts, and of course we're on 30-minute delay, so it's not as if we can really fix the problem from our end, but... Uh, They've been doing a pretty good job of at least following the action at the tables all throughout the day. So here we are, ace of clubs and a club rough with the six of spades. Six, and all the little trumps have scored and all will be left are big ones. Yeah. You can contrast this with uh, board number two where the lack of spots was really catastrophic for the declaring side uh, here presence of spots have made the hand just trivial. Definitely. All right. Well, four boards in. So Rosenthal still clinging on to a small lead thanks to their defense on board one. And North has kind of an exciting hand to choose 
an opening bid for. Um, one heart or four hearts, depending on what you feel like in the moment, I think are both pretty sensible opening bids. We'll see what Helgamo decides to go with. I think with the colors being as they are, maybe four hearts makes a lot of sense. Um, you're much more likely to buy a four heart opener bit, opening bid than if you start with one heart. And so Helgamo does go with the four heart opener. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can't be afraid of a sniper behind every tree. Here you've got like, you know, a broken seven card suit. If things are bad, you could be damaged quite harshly in four hearts. But on the other hand, four hearts puts all the pressure on the opponents uh, when they aren't murdering you. And sometimes they can't even get you when they are because the hand with the hearts is a strong hand and they can't double because it's takeout. The other hand doesn't have the strength and can't double. So sometimes it's easier to where a hand where, you know, if you open three hearts, let's say the hand was a little weaker, you know, you open three hearts and they might stretch to reopen with a double against four hearts, they probably won't. So sometimes even four hearts is safer than three hearts. Sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. The, the other consideration is you're unfavorable if this is your side's hand for game. Maybe the opponents have a good save in one of the black suits and four hearts kind of forces them to find it immediately. Whereas you open a heart, your partner bids two clubs, you get the two spade over call, and oh my, this is... Uh... Well, and if you look at this hand, the opponents had a down zero save in four spades against four hearts, mm -hmm. which is the best kind of save. Right. <laughs> But, yes. <laughs> but instead, they're playing this hand in clubs. Now, I, if the club finesse was on, then they would be making six clubs here. When the club finesse off, they weren't even making five. So maybe the uh, raise to six clubs had everything to gain and nothing to lose. Yeah, um, that's, that's a good point. I mean, obviously, East, a little bit under pressure over four hearts directly, it decides to try five clubs. And as you say, West maybe a little bit hopeful that suits split better or his partner's clubs are a little bit better and he can set up his spade suit. Yeah, I mean, I think East was bidding five clubs mostly as a save, wasn't really thinking they were likely to make it, but mm -hmm. felt that the unfavorable opponent who opened four hearts probably had enough stuff to make it and he was right about that. Yeah. Had he passed, he would have gotten a little luckier because his partner would have probably balanced with four spades. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not 100% that he would have, but he might have. Certainly, if you passed and partner passed, that would not be good for your side because North South are going to have uh, fairly easy 10 tricks and hearts with uh, uh, seven hearts and three diamonds. Right, 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 right. But yes, I, I do believe 100% West was going to balance four spades if given the opportunity. Uh, the six card spade suit and singleton heart over there. But I'd certainly rather, looking at the East West hands, I think I'd rather play six clubs than defend four hearts. <laughs> That's true, yes. Yes, I'm with you on that. South is feeling fairly comfortable about his odds of chances of getting a plus score at this point. Now, I think against five clubs, Helgama would have switched to the diamond. I Yes, I definitely agree with that. Um, I, I'm not sure what he was looking for with the heart switch. Um, Maybe he was hopeful that his partner had led a singleton heart, and... I, mean, I suppose it's possible, yeah, if the hearts were 7 four, one, one, the partner had a club higher than a 9. Yep. And maybe if partner doesn't have a spade trick, uh, or a club trick, then they wouldn't get their diamond trick anyways if he switched to a 9. Mm-hmm. So maybe, maybe that defense makes good sense against six. Yeah, I can't against really get six. That bad. Yep. So I think you're right that Helgamo would have beaten five clubs and six clubs the same number of tricks. Well, six clubs down one. A little bit of payback for Broglin and Bakke's misfortune in the second quarter. Yeah, it's a sort of result that can go either way, right? Because if if you're allowed, if your side's allowed to play four spades in the other room, then it's a terrible result for you. But if 
your side's defending four hearts in the other room, then it's a great result for you. Yeah, yeah. You just don't know. When a, when a board like that happens, you win 10, lose 10, you have no idea. <laughs> it's like another trap hand for north-south. Just I'm not looking at the east-west cards, but it looks like you know, two balanced hands with, uh, uh, it was 12 ups at 13 last time, it's 12 ups at 13 this time. This time there are spots with the length, like the clubs are ace eight instead of ace five with the length, and the heart suit has the 10 in the length. It's a 4-4 four, four heart fit, so it looks like look, revealing the east-west cards, it looks like it's normal to get to four hearts and go down there. Perhaps more than one trick. Yep. That seems correct to me. West well, is going to have to find a lead in a moment. <laughs> that's that's also true. Uh, East is going to have to find a lead, you mean? Uh, um, yes. Now, so this is one of these... I, 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 I kind of wanted to say that I've talked with Chris Willenkin about this, and he says his his belief is if I can put Helgamo in game, I'm going to do it. <laughs> that seems like pretty sensible. <laughs> yes. Um, I, if I could put Helgamo in game and, and have it count for my side, I would do it also. Yeah, that's that's a winning strategy, I'm sure. Uh, so uh, I think with a lot of people play some sort of check back here after a club, a heart, two hearts, they raise frequently with three, find out whether it's a four, three fit. But you should remember that when partner when you're looking at a hand like that and partner has raised you on a three card suit, they did it for a reason. They were staying away from no Trump. And if partner doesn't want to play no Trump and my stuff's in clubs and hearts, I also don't want to play no Trump. So if it's a four, three heart fit, it's probably right. Anyways, mm -hmm. that's why Helga didn't bother to check back. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Just because you have a convention on your card doesn't mean you have to employ it. Right. Yep. So he's just made a passive lead, which is normal in 2024. <laughs> Yeah, spade lead to the queen, king, diamond switch, goes to the on ten. Your right with his nine third of diamonds and queen ten third of clubs, so diamond switch seems attractive to my eyes. I agree. Not switching to a trump with a four triple three diamond, and you know that you've got the spades bottled up. Declarer might actually get desperate and finesse the Ten of Spades, trying to pitch a diamond loser away. Let's yeah, say he goes he diamond to the queen, king, and ace. Okay, there, there is the diamond switch. With the eight of diamonds, maybe Declarer will play low, but to try to maintain control, he could play low and duck it in hand. Mm -hmm. And if East plays another spade after winning the Ten of Diamonds, Declarer has to get, at, again, might finesse the Ten of Spades, figuring that's their route to pitching the diamond loser away. Yeah, and it's not too costly to try it. This isn't one of these vulnerable games at Imps where you try this hook and you suddenly wind up down three minus 300 and you're losing five. So he has done, he, I mean, he read the eight of diamonds. I think like people aren't leading from the king of diamonds in this position very often. Mm -hmm. So so the, the defense that I, I was thinking might happen has happened. And I, I do think to, oh no, they're not finesse the ten of spades. So maybe he's going to try to uh, finesse the trumps and then hope that uh, he can do something with the clubs to get rid of the diamond in the other hand. Yeah, that seems likely to me. Yeah, if the king of hearts was on side, he would have great chances to make this, in fact. I think that eight of clubs has swayed him, as you say, the good club spots. And he knows he has to do something with the clubs anyway. So he, mm -hmm. he might duck his heart, uh, but has not. Well, that can't club switch is... Uh, that can't be right. He can't have switched to the game of clubs, could he? Uh, that, that looks like a very dangerous card to switch to. That nine of clubs has now become very important. Oh my. Wow. Now, Helgamo really hasn't switch. realized that the switch was from King Jack Doubleton yet. He almost needs it to be from King Jack Third. 
that's a crazy aggressive switch for a hand where East is defended passively, 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 and it's all working. And then then he just grabs his trump king on the first opportunity and switches to a, a king in a suit where Declara almost certainly has the ace of clubs on this auction too. Whoa! What? No, 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 no. There's no way that. As did East then? What happened? Huh? Somehow West wound up getting squeezed in the black suits or something? No, it, it's just not possible. There is no squeeze. <laughs> I thought I could see, but... I... Okay, we'll take this with a grain of salt. I don't know that that's really a 420. I, yeah, I, I, I'm also not convinced. Anyway, it looks like maybe the Vigraph operator lost track of the play, or maybe what happened was East faced the king of clubs and said, I get one more. And that... Yeah, that's entirely possible. I, I think, there, I just can't imagine him actually shifting the hand clubs. That feels like that didn't really happen. I, and also, I agree. There's no way he's making it. Even with the hand clubs, you can't even make it. I so, agree. Oh, look at that. We, we do have a score update. So it is corrected to minus okay. 50. All right. I feel better about that. <laughs> I don't know how they got there, but they got there somehow. Yes. All right. So board seven. Like a, kind of a routine start to the auction. Um, yeah, West opening the 11 count over there, but 5-4 in the majors, four controls. Yeah, nowadays, people open kind of like all of their hands with five-card majors and 11 high-card points, even when they have a singleton king. Um, I, I'm not there. <laughs> I can't bring myself to do it. Uh, but uh, I, I like partner to be able to count on me for something when I open the bidding. Mm-hmm. It does kind of make some of your auctions easier, but uh, it, there is a, definitely a first mover advantage also. So the light openers uh, do get their day in the sunshine. So this hand had some play for, for six clubs. And on the lie of the cards, it might actually have made six clubs. I think it actually does. But... You, you are correct. I don't think there is any chance that anyone's getting to six clubs. <laughs> No. <laughs> but, but yes, I like where your head's at, um, especially with those 10 imps coming in on board five. We kind of going back to that one. In the other room, there was also a four heart opener from McAllister on the same hand that Helgamo chose to open four hearts, but East decided not to take a call. West was able to balance four spades, and that ended the auction. No more bidding. Tough for South to bid five hearts at unfavorable with, uh, you know, four triple three hand and eight third of hearts. Right. Kind of a don't expect to make five hearts. And so and you do expect to get doubled there. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll yeah. in here. <laughs> <laughs> did not have a great choice of opening leads. I mean, his best suit, King Queen Nine Fourth of Spades, was opened on his left, so he goes with the club honor sequence. And this is one of those auctions where, like, they they get into three no trump and they wind up having like plenty of diamonds between their their two hands a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, like like your left hand opponent might be uh, five four three one instead of five four one three. Mm -hmm. And your, and your right hand opponent could easily be something like two, two, four, five, and leading diamond just blow up the suit. Yeah. So I kind of understand sort of the jack of clubs. In fact, with with the actual West hand, a lot of players would have bid three clubs over two no trump, just to sort of be appropriately cautious at imp scoring, avoid three no trump where your diamond stopper is like queen third opposite a singleton. Right. Yep. I would have bid three clubs. Over two no trouble, but I don't think it's a close decision. And again, that's why uh, he's in the um, in the round of thirty-two. Round. <laughs> well, Declare has, I guess you could say, misguessed the heart suit. I mean, he's playing with over tricks at this point. For me, usually in this type of position, I just like you know don't put a ton of thought into it. I've already made my contract. I'm just going to sort of like play my cards and, and take take whatever first position occurs to me mm -hmm. and uh, and get on to the next hand rather than waste a ton of time trying to like eco an extra 1% chance of an extra trick. Sure, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Save your brain power for brain the- cells, yeah, yeah. For, when, for when the, when the trick is meaningful. <laughs> 
Yeah. We old people have limited brain cells, so. So I do notice that <laughs> Brogland and Bakke have moved to the other table. I, I don't exactly know what happened. Um, and I haven't asked anyone, so maybe nothing happened, but I, I really feel as if there was a little bit of a, an incident that happened with the four players, Brooklyn, Bakke, Weingarten, and Rain, um, from the second quarter. I, I don't know Weingarten and Rain particularly well, so I don't know their personalities. Um, I, Bakke and, and Brooklyn seem like they're pretty easy to get along with at the table, so. Yeah, it would, it would surprise me, but I mean, there was a hand where Declare just had all the rest of the tricks and he was playing the entire board out. Um, and anyway, uh, maybe they just decided that their lineup was better suited for Helgamon and Willenkin to sit against this pair, depending on who had seating rights. He's kind of had an awkward decision here after two hearts came around to him. Mm -hmm. I suppose the... I mean, partner didn't make a responsive uh, uh, support, uh, support double. double of two spades uh, of two hearts. So partner could use, could actually have had four hearts on this hand and be passing this double mm -hmm. in your four three fit. Well, it's a committed a Burns law violation. <laughs> um, so three no is better by east because it puts south on lead, who has an awkward. Has to lead like the Queen of Hearts. Uh, yeah, he, he, you don't see South just leading the Queen of Hearts at trick one. <laughs> um, it looks like the diamonds provide five tricks, the clubs three tricks, and the opening lead one trick, no matter what. So yeah. you know, it seems safe enough. Right, you are. No matter how bad the splits are in the suits, Declare should always be comfortably able to make his nine here. So South's just super pleased to be able to just put in the uh, nine of hearts here. Yep. Unifly is a singleton. He can uh, bang out the hearts with ace and queen with the jack third and dummy. Yeah. But uh, it'll be disappointed to find Declare should be just be claiming ten tricks as soon as a trick one. Or, or ask how clubs break. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I would do at the table. Nine of hearts, I win the king. I'd say, how do clubs break? <laughs> and they say, four one. And I say, okay. Ten tricks or yeah. nine tricks. Yeah. I mean, it really depends who's on the table, who's at the table, how many of these hands get played in, in three seconds, and how many of them get played in ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Is I mean, you, you should know playing against Helgamo and Wolanke that they're not about to like you know pitch their club stopper away on the run of the diamonds. Sure. Yeah. So. You know, there's, there's, you don't really need to like play the unblock the king ten of diamonds, cross the queen of clubs, and play the ace queen jack of diamonds to see mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Like, do you think it's bad sportsmanship, or do you, do you just think like you would rather have more time for the other hands? I, I don't think it's bad sportsmanship. I, I think, uh, I think some people just don't visualize that they're, you know, they're ex have a hard, hard time visualizing when their expert opponents might throw a trick away. Mm -hmm. and when, sure. When they might not. Yeah. And, and so, right, it's what it looks like. I, I bet North claimed for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. some If you're playing multi, that then that North hand might be that, like, two-spade opening with spades and a minor. If you're not, oh. I would imagine what's passing. Oh, God, no. I think they are. <laughs> Um, okay. That North... makes to a two spades, four spades option. Oh, he know he passed it. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe they aren't then. I think you're right that two spades, spades, and a minor would be a perfect description for North for seat favorable. Now, it might be two spades, spades, and a minor, and a minus 800 added to the description. But <laughs> <laughs> if you're playing the convention, you got to use it with a hand like that. Yeah. And it feels really sick when your spots are eight high clubs and east 10, six in spades. You could easily be getting murdered. But... Mm hmm. Like I said, there's not a sniper behind every tree. No. Well, Willenkin has his real no trump opener in third seat. Full 15. Just spid two spades here. 
after the transfer, um, and that ended it. Um, I, I think there's a decent case for bidding three spades there with you know like all that texture despite just uh, 15 high card points. I hate super accepts that are more descriptive than three spades because like a partner has a hand like this, they don't care where your double thin is. If you're playing something descriptive, they're just going to bid game. Almost all the hands you super accept partner was either going to accept or not. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter that you're describing a war. Really yeah, just... but, but Michael, important question. How can we make Helgamo declare four spades when the auction has started this way? <laughs> That's true. If Helgamo was declaring four, well, yeah, I mean, it, I guess you could you could bid three hearts to force Helgamo to be the declarer. <laughs> but, yeah, Chris is, can take a lot of tricks. Too. I, I I know. I just um, it, it, it's a little surprising that declares play on clubs and not diamonds here because oh no, a diamond pitch a diamond doesn't generate a club pitch. Declare has to lose a club, a diamond, and a heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, declare has a this game is actually kind of like pretty easy with. Club, especially with clubs breaking. Yeah, the club anyway. splitting is definitely good news for Declare. He does have, would have some play with uh, in the Ten of Diamonds and the Heart suit, even if clubs were more vile than this. But, right. Uh, you can try to score the seven of clubs for trick 13, but I don't think his partner will pay him off for the drink. <laughs> well, so, 170. Yeah, this is a self inflicted wound by Helgamon and Malenkin, with uh, Malenkin not super accepting with a hand that I consider routine to super accept with. Yeah, partner's a past hand. You know, he probably figured if game had play, it might have been thin. Obviously, I, I think Helgamo could have had as much as the club queen extra, and then game's actually really good, despite partner only having eight. I, I wonder if they use some two club through two spades auctions for some spade invites, and so this was less likely to be invitational. Hmm. But I mean, even so, you can see that, you know, he, he, I mean, here, even a partner's diamond queen was a low one you had to play for game. Yeah, you, you barely. <laughs> Better play if their diamond queen was the jack. I know more options, but. Well, we were zooming ahead of the other table. We finished nine out of 15 boards this set, um, three yeah, more than the other room. Table. So North has a pretty sexy hand. I yeah. love these six fives with texture and, and and this is a good reason to not make these unusual two no trump overcalls on junky hands so that you know this hand is is not considered to be a mountain of extra values for you. For me, if I saw my partner bid two no trump showing the red suits over one club, I would happily bid four hearts here with the south cards. Hmm. He does have some nice fitting honors in both red suits. The jack of hearts is probably working, and the King Jack of Diamonds is obviously great. So Wilenkin is thinking about it. Yeah, the Jack of the Trump suit is one of the most underrated cards in Bridge, I think. It gives you so much safety against so many bad things that could possibly happen to you. Mm -hmm. so meanwhile, I mean, Helgamo is going to bid again with the 6-5 hand, and they're going to, it looks like five hearts is down one, but four spades was me. King, maybe not. Four spades was maybe making. Uh, I guess clubs break badly. I guess they can rough a diamond and a heart in the west hand to make four spades. Mm -hmm. So if Helgamo does bid, do you think he should just bid five hearts or five diamonds, or do you think he should double? I like five diamonds. I, I, and I like double, too. I, I like both of those more than five hearts. Mm -hmm. Partner could easily have a hand where, you know, he bid four hearts because it's game, but both hearts and diamonds under rank spades, so once you're going to the five level, you want your better fit. Sure, yeah. And I think double is reasonable, too, to give partner a chance to defend. Um, it's it's a question with the six five. Like, if, if I had an extra honor and just normal five five shape, then I think that would be sort of classic for double. So let's say my a king and a club, like if you turn the five of diamonds to the king of clubs, I think that would be a classic double in this situation. Mm -hmm. With the six diamond, I'm, I think I, I would be more of a bidder. What, what do you think? Uh, yeah, all, I mean, all of that makes sense to me. I, 
I think it's tough given that we don't have a lot of information about what South's four heart bit is based off of. Um, like th there's such a wide range of these four heart hands, right? Like South could have a fourth heart and a fairly weak hand, or he might have a hand with like some defense, but enough values that he thought he was gonna, well, Helgamo yep. has <laughs> defied okay. expectations. So and that wasn't any of our top choices. Um, it, it doesn't make a difference on this hand. I think no, whether you doubled or bid five diamonds or five hearts, you were going to wind up in five hearts. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think I, I'm glad you brought the uh, uh, focus on the double, though, because it's something that uh, good pairs usually have discussed about if you've shown a two suited hand and then later double. It's not a penalty double per se. It's basically saying a hand that wants to bid but also has defense mm -hmm. and can stand partner doing, you know, converting the double or bidding. Right. So this, I mean, five hearts basically is on the heart finesse. Yeah, and it will sail down a trick, so east-west missing a little bit of a penalty here, but it's kind of understandable, I mean, neither of them doubled. Unless it goes ace of clubs, ace, king of clubs, ace of spades, ace of clubs, rough, diamond to the king, heart finesse, but west can't get in with the to lead another club through to potentially promote the nine of hearts that east doesn't hold. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yes. Guys, right, so west is just let a trump to try to cut down on any potential diamond roughs, but yeah. east knows the diamonds are coming in anyways, and is going to claim. Mm -hmm. I may take one round of diamonds here first before playing any more trumps. Yeah, it seems reasonable. So down one minus 100. I mean, good, re nice result for north south. Could be duplicated, but you got to feel pretty good about getting to par and then not getting doubled on the hand. Right. If these shapely hands, the you know, it often pays to bid one more. Mm -hmm. The other time is like uh, you tend to bid one more is when you have a void in the opponent's suit is another good indicator that it could be a, a good idea to bid again. Yeah, I agree. Um, so let's see. South has some pleasing. South and west have pleasing shape. North and east not so much. No. North and east are mirrored. I don't think that necessarily makes them good partners, but... I, I had a hand where, uh, in, in the NAOPs, where my partner and my right-hand opponent had a very competitive auction, and I had a one count, four triple three with the four hearts, and Dummy came down with a two count, four triple three with four hearts. Wow, they, they had you beat by one whole jack. <laughs> Dummy's like, those two should have been partners, look how bad my hand is, and I was thinking like... <laughs> You haven't seen mine yet. <laughs> yeah. So Will Lincoln choosing to pass in first seat, which I know is a matter of style. Um, I know that he kind of sticks to the maybe more old school style that you, you shouldn't preempt with a side three card major. You should have the right length in your suits for preempts for the most part. So I don't think a three club opener was really crossing his mind. I mean, I can help you get inside Chris's head a little bit. I mean, he's he he uh, when he feels that he is on a stronger team than his opposition, and I think he feels that way here with the Rosenthal team. Um, he is not going to step out and do anything that might randomly cause him to lose a board. Mm -hmm. um, he and his and his general nature is pretty down the middle to begin with. So he'll every once in a while do something like. A little surprising, but I've played some long matches against him, and and, and I ver very seldom was shocked by anything that he did, or like, wow, that was really unusual. That was really aggressive. It was always sort of like, Chris is just going to grind me down and beat me that way. And he's very good at it. Yeah. He oh, yeah, like some little Schuster dust left under his shoe. <laughs> Sweep it up for his win. Yeah. So in this case, East West have done pretty well to stop in three hearts, I think. Um, for game to make, they need basically two 
of three things to go well, they'll need either the Trumps to split or the Diamonds to come home? Well, the Diamonds is funny, right? Because the di- you know, if just looking at your hands, you know the Diamonds are coming home. You just don't know how they're coming home. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Like the double dummy solver is always going to get that diamond suit right, but the uh, human at the table, not so much. Yeah, and I will note, uh, we've uh, the play has been moving relatively quickly, but Chris Vilenkin won the Ace of Clubs a trick one from the Ace King. And he's doing this because he knows the opponents are going to be counting his high cards as this the play goes on. He was a passed hand in first seed. So if he had showed up with the Ace King of Clubs and maybe even the Queen of Spades later, the opponents were always going to guess the missing honors correctly, and look look what happened here. He's earned himself an extra diamond trick. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i not sure Declare should have believed his Ace of Clubs at trick one, because Chris is, like, super capable of this sort of play. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I and mean, Declare had to make a choice about how to play the diamonds. Yeah. Now, if Declare, Declare is short an entry of dummy to take two diamond finesses, mm-hmm. which is a very attractive way to play that diamond suit. Uh, so leading the queen of diamonds off dummy is saying, I, I'm going to win whenever the king of diamonds is on my right, I'm going to win whenever the jack of diamonds is doubled. Those are the cases you win. Which are a good number of cases, and if you believe the ace of clubs, are probably your best line. Mm. There is a problem with the fourth round of diamonds, given that trumps were 3-1. You're... You're not going to be able to rough the fourth diamond. There, there might have been alternatives to Declare's line of play. I'll put it that right. way. I mean, well, maybe Declare, if Declare was wanted to start diamonds that way, maybe Declare should have played a heart to the ace without having cashed the king, so that they would remain with a trump and dummy on three one trumps uh, to take care of the fourth diamond. So sure. Right. Yes. Heart to the ace, queen of diamonds, king ace, ten of diamonds. They win the jack. They can't productively play another trump. You win mm-hmm. the second trump and then rough the fourth diamond. Yeah. Way. That, that would be a, a way to go about it. Either way, I, I do think that credit to Chris on that one for giving Declare a chance to go wrong. I mean, it wasn't just winning the club ace at trick one that he did for the false card. He then returned a low club on the next trick, which is... Obviously, he can do it. He just did. We saw it live on TV, but... Um, you know, yeah, maybe absolutely. Yeah. That was a good play by Chris. Good mm-hmm. defense. Um, I really want to recognize when when players make these good plays. Uh, if you don't give your opponents a chance to go wrong, then you know they're not going to go wrong. Exactly. And I, and I feel like my worst matches in bridge have been where I kind of describe it as sort of like I'm playing like a like a dry bridge game. Like I, I I'm just not finding the plays that. You know, even though I know what double dummy, they're not going to gain a trick, but at single dummy, they might. Mm-hmm. So the, the stuff has kind of, they, they do have a diamond fit here and they have a heart fit. Um, we, six we, diamonds. <laughs> yeah, we, we were point. talking about this law earlier. What is it? Like the longer an auction goes on without finding a fit, the more likely it's in diamonds. I, I think there's a, a law like that. <laughs> um, that, that could easily be true. <laughs> I'm just amazed the number of constructive auctions we've seen because it feels like I go through an entire tournament and I don't have a single two over one auction the entire <laughs> days. Yeah, it is surprising against this East West pair in particular. They have been preempting fairly aggressively throughout this match so far. And, and something that's really, if your opponents are very aggressive and they're sitting here at favorable vulnerability and you get the auction to yourself, you, sometimes you have to wonder, like, maybe suits are really breaking very well in this hand and I should be a little more aggressive. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. The favorable vulnerability against aggressive opposition who just lets you have a free reign at it, it probably is because they really just don't have anything to bid. And that means suits are splitting all around. So back to the auction, a spade, a two hearts, two no seems pretty normal because North doesn't want to jam things with three diamonds. Mm-hmm. Rather, you know, position the ace queen of clubs for no trump. Yep. South three bid three hearts, might have bid three diamonds, but over three hearts, four clubs, I'm sure showed a good raise to four hearts. Yeah. And probably didn't say anything at all about a club control so much. Oh, well, maybe said a little because he could have bid four clubs or four diamonds. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Now, South has good hearts and the Ace of Diamonds in context and signed off. So he wasn't super interested in Slam. Right. But I would think that North is going to respect the sign off. Um, even if Partner you know, had a Slam suitable hand but lacked a diamond control, like if Partner had the King of Clubs and the Ace of Spades instead of the Ace of Diamonds, you're still on the Diamond Ace being on side a diamond lead because you've got hearts from their side. Yeah, and this it's isn't one of those spots where the jack of hearts is necessarily a great card. I mean, it will protect you if partner has ace, king, queen of trumps, but most of the time, either trumps are going to be 3-2 um, or you're going to be in a bad slam. And six diamonds, while making on this hand, is a bad slam. Yeah. Also. Mm -hmm. It needs the club finesse and diamonds to work. It starts with a diamond loser you can't get rid of. So if diamonds don't break, you're just dead. And uh, and then you, you're highly unlikely to get rid of two clubs on the spades. Yeah, and actually you might even need it to be sided by south. Like, does a spade lead from east tapping dummy immediately cause some problems in setting up bring in the hearts on some line, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. The ace-king of hearts and a third round of hearts, and, you know, the shorthand has like nine and one diamond or something. Yep. You have two trump trucks. Hmm. I guess you cash. I guess you need diamonds to break in that case. You cash the ace, king of diamonds and play ace, hearts, king of hearts, heart rough, and you need the hearts to break too. Wow, North bid again with four hearts. I think that's super aggressive, having already bid four clubs. Uh, definitely is. Um, I don't think Will Lincoln is going to be pleased with the way this auction's gone, but of course he offers the five diamond cubits. Now he has a slam drive because he, yeah. he signed off with, mm -hmm. and you can't imagine a stronger hand than this to sign off over four clubs. And most people would have bid four diamonds with his hand, mm -hmm. with good hearts and the ace of diamonds. So, so now Helgamo signs off, but I don't think Chris is going to respect that. I don't think they're going to be able to find diamonds either. So, And, and West with the ace of spades may lead it, which uh, could let the declare make. <laughs> could it? Yeah. <laughs> West leads the ace of spades, and declare has two pitches for his diamonds, and then can rough the diamonds in and pitch... Uh, and he, he can get two pitches. He, he, Clark can de develop enough pitches on the Ace of Spades League. He basically get four pitches from his hand for two diamonds and two clubs. But he only needs three because the club finesse is working. Yeah. Helgamo was paused there. He might have been considering six no trump um, to protect his club queen from the opening lead, but he decides to leave it in hearts. What does Wes lead here? You have no hope that your partner actually has helpful honors for you, right? Maybe you just lead a club and hope that you put pressure on Declare that way. But what are the odds that partner has something useful for you on this auction? You have that much stuff. I think a diamond lead is relatively safe. Since yeah, I think you're... We're the one with trump length. If Declare has a guess for the Diamond Queen, they're going to guess correctly. And the, the only case where it, where it messes you up is when Partner has two Diamond Honors and Declare has two Diamond Honors and mm -hmm. is able to then like take a deep finesse that they wouldn't have otherwise found. Sure. But that's that's more risky with a singleton than a doubleton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... He, he is leading a Diamond, which seems like a reasonable start. And I think that just beats the contract. Yep. Let's declare cannot rough down the Ace of Spades short enough. The Ace of Spades would have been um, the path to defeat. <laughs> now, declare does have options to play for. I mean, he will end up going down. I'm pretty confident. <laughs> but um, he has choices, right? Like, he could try and take the club finesse, rough a club, and then hope the Queen of Hearts is on side and diamonds split. That seems like a reasonable plan. He could also try and hook East for the Ace Jack of Spades. He could play the King of Spades pitching a diamond, you know, or, or King of Spades covered if East had the Ace Jack pitching a diamond, cross by taking a club finesse, play another spade, Ten of Spades roughing finesse. Looks like he's I, going I think with he the forward will line. Play the King of Spades here and pitch a diamond. I, I, I'm, what I'm surprised is that Declare's going down as quickly as he's gone down, because I, I, I think I was expecting him to go down slower. But I like <laughs> your line. He does, too. 
Mm. I think he pitches. <laughs> He decided when the king of spades wasn't covered that the ace was not there. Mm -hmm. so going to play for diamonds to break and a heart finesse to work. Yep. So this, be, uh, this is down two, I guess, if West wins the queen of hearts and plays one back. So he takes the heart finesse before trying to rough a club and then. Well, I think he can. He could rough a spade in hand first and see what see if like. Yeah, the, this this feels a little bit better. He can go king of diamonds, diamonds, set up his diamond trick, and then. If he doesn't get a heart switch from east, he'll be able to rough his club before. Um, before trying the heart hook. I think east will shift. We'll play Trump here. You're probably right. He will end up down two if he switches to Trump's because his best chance at this point is for the heart queen to be on. We're giving time for the other table to catch up at least now. The sand's been a little bit slower in the auction and despite Chris being relatively quick to the first few tricks, the play has slowed down. I, I think one thing that's interesting is that the play is almost faster in six hearts than it might be in four hearts. <laughs> four hearts where you're like almost cold, but you just want to make sure you're safe against all the bad things that might happen to you. Yep. Whereas in six hearts, you're just like, well, I just need everything to be sitting right. So <laughs> I guess that's what I'm playing for. Yeah. All right, Spade gets roughed with the Six of Hearts. Rough a club with the Jack of Hearts. Good technique here so that we can play a heart to the 10 and try and pull trumps. Look at the stuck and dummy. Seeing West play the jacks of both black suits on the previous two tricks, I'm pretty sure Chris knows the count on the hand that West originally started with 4-3-2-4 um, four, four shape. And there it is. Pulled a couple of trumps. It was not good enough. Queen didn't drop. Down one. So three boards to play, but... Wow, Rosenthal up until that point has been kind of lights out in this set, um, shutting out McAllister 18 nothing. And and I think board 10 was also a good result for uh, for Rosenthal. Yep. Yeah, so maybe so, uh, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel here for McAllister towards the end of this segment. So I if I'm, if I'm holding the north hands there, I think I just bid one now. I'm not going to try for a penalty against one spade, and I want to get my values off my chest. I wish I had a better spade spot than the eight, but what are you going to do? That's what you were dealt. Well, if, if you thought you had a better spade spot than the eight, maybe you would pass and try for <laughs> <Maybe>. a penalty. <laughs> there are five of them, you know? <laughs> right. So, and he says, yeah, I, no worries, I'm bidding two spades. And South just has a double here. It's mm -hmm. just like, I've got, all, I've got the other suits, Whatever you want to do with is fine with me, partner. It's good to discuss what these doubles mean. Like, I mean, it's hard. Like, South can hardly have a spade stack on this auction. South has about the expected spade length, maybe one shorter. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, I think Helgen will pass is this and probably leads Ace in a trump. Yeah, all of that sounds right to me. I mean, Chris is not going to be too upset. Hearing his partner pass this out, he does have extras and a bunch of quick tricks, which is kind of important. The fall of the Ten of Diamonds is really helpful for Declare if he's in two spades doubled. He still is 
going to lose control of the hand at some point. At some point, South's going to get in and start playing high clubs, and Duclair's not going to be super pleased with that. Yeah, oddly enough, um, North has no entry to play more spades because South has all of the high clubs. If Declare, after winning spades and unblocking the Diamond Ace, exits the King of Hearts off dummy, um, <laughs> I don't really see why he would, but uh, that could be a line of play that would allow him to score a Diamond Rough. So, so yeah, what, and, and that's... So when I said North would lead Ace of Spades in a spade, um, there are... Normal technique often, especially if you have an entry, is to not give up the high trump at trick one because you lose control of the trump suit. So you're more, it's more attractive to lead a low trump, keep control of the trump suit for, so your defense has flexibility, whether you could go for a force in game and try to have your long trump or continue to draw trumps later and declare, you know, you may be able to, depending on what line declare picks, choose which of those defenses. When you aren't really sure about getting in or you need to cut down roughs quickly, then you need to lead ace and a trump. The Helgenwell probably thinks the King of Diamonds is a quick entry, mm -hmm. and so has led a low spade to try to maintain control of the trump suit. Yeah, that that makes sense as well. So this is going to give a lot of flexibility to declare. So this so does declare play a heart trick too? That's pretty. He's in his he'll be in his hand conveniently a trick too. He doesn't. And he'd like to unlock the Ace of Diamonds and score a rough first, but he has no... If he does that, he can't get back to his hand anyway, so I think what he'll do is he'll prepare for that by leading a heart of trick, too. Yep. And he needs the Ace of Hearts on his right so that the Trumps don't get drawn, so he's forced to guess the Hearts correctly, too. Mm hmm Yeah, so a heart to the Jack. So this hand's actually starting to play kind of well for Declare. I, I, it does seem as if Declare has a real chance to make it. Yeah, Seth has nothing better to do than just to, like start playing high clubs. Yep. So Jack of Clubs is going to get a count signal from North. Yeah, so that's kind of like, oh, it sucks. My high clubs can now get stranded because South has no entry for the club. Mm-hmm. And Declare. now there's just a high cross rough. Diamond to the ace, king of hearts pitching a diamond, heart rough, diamond rough, low. I g actually, maybe it's maybe it's not there. North gets to rough in just in time. Yeah, and then play, and draw the and draw the trumps. Yeah, take his three of spades for trick thirteen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A good north will unlock the 8-7 of spades to make sure they take their lowest spade for trick 13. <laughs> we'll see if Helgum was any good. <laughs> I was trying to come up with a variant so that players could score more alcoholic drinks from their partners at the end of play. So rather than just the 7 of diamonds being a beer, the 7 of spades could be like a, a whiskey and coke. And... No, they didn't score 8 tricks. I don't think they got eight. Not on the play we saw up to that point. They weren't getting eight trucks. Okay. I got a message from a spectator, um, which I will share because this would be an explanation. Helgamo supposedly revoked during the play. Okay, that would uh, that would make it hard for the ViewGraph operator to enter the correct cards. Yes. <laughs> Um, so that could explain why play didn't finish and also why it did end up as 670. So there may be a bit of a delay here as we wait for the, uh, for the director to make the ruling and give us the success. I guess not. Well, that's interesting. So towards 12 and 13, back to back, total disasters for the Rosenthal team. And yeah. that probably is put, uh, and the Calister 112 where 410 was potentially a good result for North South at the other table. Uh, East West allowed North South to play four hearts mm -hmm. um, rather than bidding four spades, which might well, which was probably making. Um, and so another, so like there's going to be three disasters over the course of four boards for the Rosenthal team, which was, what were they ahead by 40? They were ahead by 20. They're going to be behind by uh, a game swing after the end of these disasters. 
Yeah, definitely. So this is once again going to be an exciting fourth quarter match that we will be back for in just a few minutes. Um, have to wait for the other table to finish up once we're done here with the 15 boards and the players will compare, but. So a lot of players after a spade pass and no trump use a jump to three clubs to show a, either a hand with a natural jump shift in clubs or a hand that's too strong to read with three spades or a hand with uh, that wants to have read with three hearts but only had a four card suit. And apparently this east-west pair are not using that because east is jumped to his jack 10, nine, fourth of hearts. Uh, it won't cost them anything. All those roads would lead to three no trump on this uh, on this deal. Um, wouldn't take too much jiggering around to make uh, east west belong in in, uh, in slam in a minor, but not on this day. Yeah, um, I agree with everything you said. I would refer to the convention as super gazilly, where <laughs> three clubs is just a little bit stronger than the two club bid, but. Um, they do get to three now, as you say. And the spade lead, <laughs> I wouldn't know what to think. Here, right? I and mean, this really like, guarantees a trick by playing low and going up doesn't, so. <laughs> that, that's true. I, I guess we probably expect North to be leading spade shortness through but the long spades. The interesting thing here is that if you go if you cash the ace king of diamonds, you don't have an entry to the spades anymore. Mm -hmm. So now Declara plays a spade of the jack and finds out what happened to him in trip one. But I, I think in the end, he's going to wind up cashing the ace-king of diamonds and seeing the jack fall and having nine tricks. He's kind of down to needing four diamond tricks. Right. Yeah, now that, um, now that the opponents have taken a spade and he can't knock out the club queen, otherwise they would get three heart tricks. So, and he did well here to cash the king of clubs and to look for a doubleton queen first. Mm -hmm. So if the queen of clubs was a doubleton, then he doesn't need to worry about the diamonds. Yep. So play going rather quickly. I mean, there's not really much to the hand other than declare is going to have to take a few diamonds if the jack wasn't dropping he might spend some time deciding do i hook the 10 or play to the queen percentage would be to lead to the queen probably um, declare had options earlier in the play but not later like after declare won the jack of spades you could have played a heart mm -hmm. instead of instead of crossing in diamond right instead of cashing in clubs just sort of uh see what the defense did. Yeah. But he, I mean, it was probably always going to come down to this. Mm -hmm. So 400. So like another hand kind of slightly in the slam zone east west. Six clubs is okay-ish, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's probably okay, yeah. It looks I'm like how to evaluate how good it really <laughs> is. Even looking at the hands, like I was just looking at the east west hands, do I want to be in six clubs? Not sure. Probably not. If I knew that if one if that was ace king queen six of clubs, then sure. Like definitely. For sure, yeah. Um I mean, you have if the clubs come in, you start life with eleven tricks, the spades will usually provide a twelfth. If not, then the heart finesse could provide a twelfth. I, I do not believe South is open a club. Right. Let's see if, if South did not open a club. No, we, we forgot if, a pass. Yeah, if if uh, if the clubs don't come in, you're not down yet though, because the heart finesse could be on side and the spades with come spades home. coming in to pitch both your diamonds away. Yeah. So I I think overall you do want to be in this slam, but I. I think um, we'll see. I don't know that they're going to get here. So it went past a club, a heart, double, two hearts. That's how we think it really went. One yeah, heart, and unfavorable, unfavorable with basically yeah. a preemptive jump over ball. Yeah, yeah. So double by west over two hearts, I guess, is 
just takeout, it looks like. Yeah, or it might have been, if the double of one heart showed four or more spades, then the double of two hearts was probably support. Then East three no trump with positional heart stoppers and sort of like a weak no trump seems normal. The question is whether West should be bidding again over that. And uh, not clear to me mm -hmm. that he should be. It's just as it wasn't entire, it wasn't immediately clear that I really wanted to be in slam. I look at the north-south cards, of course, I want to be in slam. I think you're right. I mean, I, I just did a quick run on like the percentage chance of slam making and got to somewhere in the low 60s. And that makes it a worthwhile slam to be in. Uh, the operators figured out that North is not going to make very many tricks in 3 no Trump. <laughs> <laughs> so if East West do reach 3 no, this would be an exciting board to watch in the other room to finish out the set because there is a chance for Rosenthal to pull back what has been a little bit of a late set disaster for them at this table. Now, uh, we see that Chris's false card on board 11 is, did pick up five amps against three hearts make in the other room. Yeah, really nice. And hard play for five amps to the Rosenthal team. Yeah, those five amp pickups do really matter. You know, everyone says that imps are about games and slams and safety plays and trying to guarantee your contracts and uh, these part score deals really do add up over the course of the match. So, well done there, but boards 12 and 13 yet to be compared. So I don't think the play here is going to be particularly challenging. Um, you want to hop over to the other room? Uh, let's see the opening lead. I, I was wondering if South might try a low diamond, which could potentially net him some number of tricks, but the hard opening lead. Well, there is the play. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, let's jump over to the other table if there's no one else there. Hello, everyone. We have just Greetings finished playing the other, the other room. room. Yes. So West opening one club is going to make this less of a slam option for North South is my first thought. Yeah, I agree. You were talking earlier about how everyone opens 11s with a five card major. West here choosing to open the 11 with a four card major. So self, self splintered in spades here after transferring to hearts because South actually does have a slam positive hand in the context of the auction, but North is looking at King Queen 10, 9, 5th opposite partner's shortness and no supporting heart honor is not going to be thrilled by this. Should should we rewind to the point where North overcalled a no trump or do we just not need to talk about talk about that? Uh, well, I mean, they, I guess North had a choice between one spade and one no trump and I can see an argument for both of those things. Sure, um, yeah. Makes sense. One of Trump certainly simplified the remainder of the auction. Because one spade would have given South a, an awkward problem as to how, how to advance it. Especially if two hearts would be non-forcing. Mm -hmm. Sort of a hand where opposite a fit, you're almost certainly going to be making four hearts. And opposite a misfit, you know, partners 5-1 in the majors, you might be struggling to make nine tricks in hearts. Yeah, so East has passed, South has bid four diamonds here. Um, I assume four diamonds is a self-cupid in support of his own heart suit. Is that right? Well, I mean, canonically, this self-splinter would be one, six, three, three. Yeah. Um, the, you, I think you would normally transfer and then bid your four card suit if you were interested in potentially playing slam in your four card suit. Mm -hmm. um, so it probably should be a cubit for hearts to, to my eyes. Yeah. The self splinter sort of said hearts are trump. Mm -hmm. And if I was interested in another strain, I would have taken a different route earlier. I mean, North should still be rejecting this. Yeah. North hates his hand. You, you overhaul a no trump, you're going to have some cover cards. North has surprisingly few. <laughs> 
Yes. So even though the King of Diamonds suddenly became a better card, it was not didn't like magically make the king turn the king queen of spades into a cover card. Right. Well, we'll see if you're right about the pace of play between six hearts and four hearts. Michael was commenting in the other room that the six heart contract was played relatively quickly. Declare just needed everything to work. Whereas in four hearts, Declare probably wants to protect against four one diamonds or four one trumps or the king of clubs offside. The opening bid should give him to Clara some comfort in knowing where the club king's on, especially after the queen of diamonds lead. There's not a lot left for West to have. So yeah. to Clara, if to Clara just starts, just gives up a heart by starting them low to the jack, um, then they have five hearts and two diamonds is seven and two clubs is nine. And they can force a spade trick for 10 along the way to that. Mm -hmm. um, so that might like if the defense could use track diamonds and they break then you're done the only danger would be if like west had four diamonds there's something you said for just winning ace of diamonds and leading a low heart here four hearts. yeah i think maybe a slight improvement ace of hearts and a low heart um since you don't really need to lead low to the jack and you have plenty of entries to force out that ace of spades later but that would be a good idea. I think I like that plan. Looks like Declare is going after the match point plan of uh, trying to rough a club in North Sand. And that will work as well. Mm -hmm. And other than the heart being in the opening bidder's hand, uh, it sits friendly for Declare, which is why six hearts only went one off in the other room. Right. Well, so if four hearts ends up making 11 tricks here, which I think is what's going to end up happening, then... This feels like a confused line of play with roughing the spade before cashing the ace of clubs. I actually think Declare is just trying to score as many low roughs in his own hand as possible. So his club rough is trick six for Declarer's side, and he has only three more tricks by force in the trump suit. And now only known two more tricks by force in the trump suit, now they roughed high. Yeah, but as long as that queen of diamonds was from at least two cards, he can rough this spade low and lead a diamond up towards the king. If West ever roughs in, West is end played into leading, well, trumps or clubs or spades or something into Declarer. Seems like Declare should cash one high heart here before leading a dime. He agrees with you. If you get to the king of diamonds, you can then rough a spade with the ten of hearts. Well, cashing the second heart's not going to hurt him. Yep. So he'll take eleven tricks here by rough by crossing the king of diamonds, roughing the king of spades, and watching the declarers, uh, the defenders. Trump and Diamond Tricks fall together with a thud at Tricks 12 and 13, which uh, is called a compression play. Yeah, and this will be a big 13 imps going the way of McAllister, which will exactly tie up the match. And boy, do we have a surprise for you on the next board. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... Uh, so Brady was saying earlier that um, Chris Malenkin was his strategy was to just let Helgamo declare whenever possible and bid game when that was going to be the case, which is a great strategy. But what he neglected to say was that he should probably try to avoid having Helgamo defend on hands where it's doubled in a part score and Helgamo is planning on revoking. <laughs> I think you summed it up perfectly. Um <clears throat> So uh, apparently uh, the report that we have is that Helgamo revoked on defense to two spades doubled, allowing Declarer to make the contract. Yeah, source one of the players playing in this match. So I suspect it's true. But we'll see if we get a different result at this table. South opens the same one diamond, West makes the same one spade overcall. 
Michael was talking in the other room about how with such weak spade spots, um, he thinks just getting in the one no trump bid rather than potentially passing and going after a penalty at the one level um, would be his preference. I think I agree. So if you ever play back the boards that they use in these matches, and, and I do, and then every once in a while you come up with results, you're like, that can't possibly be the actual result. The operator made a mistake. <laughs> it's not a made mistake. doubled. And it was impossible to make it. The position they're showing that was just, I'm not going to count that as a 13 mm -hmm. no, it really was. On this <laughs> so East two diamonds probably shows hearts here. Um, I mean, he's probably trying to show the hearts on the way to two spades. Um, oh, you, you don't think two diamonds is just a limit raise? It, uh, oh, you're right. I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it could be <laughs> either one. Uh, East's a past hand has hearts worth mentioning mm -hmm. um, and does have kind of a good hand in context of being a past hand uh, despite the one no trump overcall i mean i would not count on the opponent's third seat one diamond followed by one no trump overcall to mean that we can't make game right uh, i don't trust them that much my opponents are too sneaky <laughs> yeah especially opponents such as these so i guess two diamonds must have shown spades of south spinning two hearts here mm -hmm. and this is going to bring North South to three no Trump, maybe. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, North still doesn't like his spade spots. The fact the partner shortened the suit does not made it, you know, because it's not made that eight into a nine. Mm -hmm. so looks like North is just maybe preference back to diamonds rather than. Well, I wonder if they play like some sort of uh, Ingbert. And over the reverse in competition where three diamonds shows a little something. Yeah, that would make sense if Tuno was some sort of Labensol esque type bid, then three diamonds could show a little bit of values. The South hey, has North, a hard choice. Hey, North actually has a very good hand on this auction because mm -hmm. the Queen of Hearts is opposite partners side length the king of diamonds in partners known long suit is absolute gold mm -hmm. in partner diamonds aren't supposed to be queen six five four deuce i'm thinking my partner's diamonds look more like these clubs with an extra length the partner's got to have like ace queen jack six of diamonds and ace king fourth of hearts i love my hand oh my well and partner has like the king of clubs to go with it i'm thinking like we're making six diamonds opposite that right so you know, the ace of spades pitches a club loser we've got Six diamonds and four hearts is ten. That's that's eleven tricks, right off peeling off the top. Well, if South doesn't pass here, they're gonna get. I mean, they're already too high. Yikes! So disaster in the other room for Rosenthal, where they let two spades doubled make, um, thanks to a revoke. But huh. if East West ever thinks to double something, then poor. <laughs> Maybe like a push. <laughs> yeah. Um, if West gets this, North South are oh, they're dead. They're dead. Oh, geez. This could be a little push. How much is this going down? Looks like they've got to lose at least a heart and three diamonds. Yeah. So what do we lead as West? You'd be tempted to lead a spade, maybe. Yeah, I lead the king of spades just to because I want to have trump control. I have. I have good trumps on this hand, so I just want to establish my side suit. Mm -hmm. I don't care about a rough. Yep. He's just got to be thrilled with his hand on his auction. He's got the eighth of trumps and his partner hit it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the king jack of hearts might take a trick as well. So West does lead the Roos no queen of spades. And I think Declare is regretting some of his choices earlier in the auction of you know bidding two hearts uh, or two diamonds which is always going to present longer diamonds and hearts to partner when your diamonds are that weak. He might have even opened it a club, treating that club's like a five-card suit and the diamonds like a four-card suit. Ace, King, Queen, Jack's pretty good holding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, as you say, Declare is not very happy with the contract he's ended up in. And if, if this goes down three, they're... Boy, is it going to be a pleasant surprise for uh, for for Chris and uh, and Gare to find out they actually 
pick up imps for minus 670. Yeah. Diamond to the 10 and ace. East does nothing but well, East may shift to a club here. Is that possible? Trying to, you know, play through to Claire. No, East is just being a good sport and returning spades in a situation where a partner his clubs probably aren't going anywhere. Declare didn't like pitch a club on the ace of spades, so there's nothing fast that your side has in clubs. It's a good inference to take. If Declare could have taken a pitch and didn't, they probably didn't need an urgent pitch. They probably figured they've got it later if they need it, or they didn't need it at all, like here. Yeah, exactly. So declare our pitches the heart at this point. Now declare's gonna get the bad news. Yeah, I mean declare probably wasn't expecting the diamonds to split this poorly, given the double of five diamonds. I mean he knew he was in trouble when he saw dummy, so West might have just had Jack fourth and it wouldn't have been the end of the world. But now it looks like his best chance is to just rough a spade, score that other small diamond. Oh, he doesn't. This is, this is the, the worst feeling, though, for, for the McAllister team and, and the best feeling for the Rosenthal team is when you have a horror show result at your table and it gets covered or it gets blown up. Like like they're plus they're so proud of their plus six seventy and it's just like, oh thank God, lose four. <laughs> no, that's it's it's really disheartening for that. And we had it, it I had one recently where uh, um, it was a very easy to bid grand slam that our teammates missed and um, at our table they had a bidding accident stopped in a uh, in a partial in a misunderstanding so so our teammates were like shaking their heads and really upset they missed their grand slam because it was so easy and then they compared the scores win 14. Uh, so, <laughs> so like their opponents just had the had that that feeling right where like they had a great result on this board and it just got blown up it's, it can be very challenging for team morale when, when something like that happens only the the like most emotionally mature players can really um, weather that storm I agree. I have definitely been on both sides of that many times in comparing results, and it feels so much worse when um, your good result gets effectively taken back or overshadowed by your teammates having an even worse result at their table. Um, like, e even if there isn't any blame to go around, and like, as you say, maybe North-South were a little bit pushy on some of their calls in this auction, but... It's not as if they necessarily did anything horrible. Like both of them just kind of bid their suits and ended up picking the wrong contract. They missed out on three no. North thought that maybe the four three heart fit would have played okay and that suit split horribly. And eventually South pulled to five diamonds and that was even worse. This guy doubled. Yeah. I mean, I wonder, though, if maybe over three diamonds, South should have tried three now rather than three spades. Sure. He'd already shown doubt about no Trump by bidding two hearts the previous time. Mm-hmm. It feels sad to leave those clubs on the shelf in a situation where he may well have a 4-4 four -four club fit. But... Certainly... When partner bid three diamonds over two hearts, I mean, when I'm looking at the south hands, I'm not really thinking high-level diamond contracts, what I want to do. When partner couldn't raise diamonds the last time. Yeah. Down three, 800, and four amps going the way of Rosenthal. So as you say, sigh of relief for their team. They do maintain a small advantage going into the last two boards of the set. But we will still have a match on our hands. 15 more boards to play. I mean, still 17 more boards to compare. Two more in this room. Now, I think McAllister is four-handed, so... Yes. They're going to have to overcome it and get back in there and, and play with the match 
basically tied with 15 boards to go. Right. I'm sure they, they'll be able to do that. This was a routine three no in the other room. The only thing of note was that East West do not play a common convention after a spade pass and no trump. Here East West, I think, might play um, Gazilli. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So I expect East to either bid two clubs if they're playing Gazilli or three clubs if they don't, and they play an artificial three clubs. But, uh, yeah, Gazilli, a very popular convention in Europe. Um, so most of the European pairs will play this. Two clubs, artificial here can show a variety of hand types, but one of them includes 17 or more high card points. Uh, not exactly the strength of a standard jump shift that would be game forcing, but it's close. Two diamonds by West. Um, I believe that says the, not enough to force game opposite 17, right? No, normally it's it's the forcing game opposite 17. Oh, okay. Um, the, the point ranges are kind of variable a little bit here, so... You know, maybe East two clubs is 18 or more, and West two diamonds is seven plus, um, or West just decided to upgrade based on the strength of his club suit. So yeah, so this way West is able to sort of show a good preference to two spades having been two diamonds on the way. To show he liked his handoffs at 17, and I assume two hearts showed who was probably natural with. I mean, I have not, I actually have never played Gazilli. So I'm embarrassed to admit, I if you can mention, I've never tried. Uh, I've played it. It's actually not as much memory work as most American partnerships fear when they first hear about it. Um, there are a couple of difficult auctions, but for the most part, it, it all kind of just makes sense. So I don't know why no one plays it in the U.S. Well, I've seen my opponents have some accidents in Gazilli auctions, and that sort of turned me off to it early. Mm -hmm. You know, so someone's saying that maybe uh, uh, East Auction suggests maybe 5422 with like 1819 or something or, or 1718 because they didn't open. Well, I guess they wouldn't open a no trump with uh, without range in, in that pattern, anyways. But, and West likes his hand for clubs if partner actually has a couple clubs, but mm -hmm. doesn't like his hand enough to go past three no trump once he su suggested it. So they're, they're subsiding in three now, which is what happened in the other room. And there are some options in the play, but it seems likely that Declare is going to wind up losing only four tracks. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that either Declare, well, with the Jack of Diamonds coming home um, and four Diamond Tricks available, Declare should be able to score up nine pretty easily. Weirdly enough, I think if East was declaring it, it could potentially be harder on a low diamond lead where you might try the 10 from dummy at trick one so you could find out whether or not that diamond finesse was working early. Yeah. And blow it. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I hate falling into that temptation. It's I'm often I'll just play the, put it play low from dummy in, in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, I can, I can see that happening to someone where they lead a low diamond from their nine eight fourth, and it goes ten jack, and now you've lost your ninth trick, and you have to you have to do some fancy footwork to maybe score that jack ten nine of hearts into a trick. Sure. Um, in this case, it looks like that is not a mistake this player would make um, because the queen of diamonds is the only entry to the club king. But right. but yeah, that that does kind of feel weird. I personally, yeah, as declare, I tell it wouldn't help you because they're blocked. Yeah, I, I I would personally rather guess the diamond suit at trick eleven or something than guess the diamond suit at trick one. So I I yeah. never like put in the ten when they lead one. So this is a declare now can always force a heart trick by uh, with the jack ten nine. Yep, and plentiful entries to the east hand. He doesn't know the spades are worth three tricks yet, though. So declare, from Declare's perspective, he has three diamonds and two clubs is five. And two spades is seven and can generate a heart trick for eight. And he can hope that either clubs or diamonds generates a ninth. He's not thinking that... that I, mean, he, he, I mean, he might think that he could try to lead low towards a jack of spades, which he can. Mm -hmm. uh, he has, uh, it's also like a time thing, right? Where... Yeah, if hearts are 5 3, there might be some issues. Yeah, 
if the hearts are five three, then maybe they give you your heart trick early, mm -hmm. and hope that you have to give up the lead. And there, it's interesting if they could pretend hearts are five three, and you know lead the ace of hearts and then play a low heart, and you're going to think they're five three and think that you can't afford to lose the lead, because then they're going to take four hearts. Whereas on on this deal, the spade queen is singleton, so. I mean, at some point, you're going to play a high spade without playing a low one if you think you're down if you play a low one. Right. Yeah, it would be fairly unnatural, though, for North to continue hearts at this point. He's looking at that jack-10-9. Yeah, I mean, it would never occur to me to do that, uh, holding the North card. So it's, I, I think it's just an interesting thought experiment to say, well, is there a case where with the North cards, I would, you know, you could continue a low heart there and actually give to Clara problems that they don't otherwise have yep. by making them, convincing them that uh, that you have a long heart set that's set up. All right, well, the Jack of Diamonds is not going to strike terror into the hearts of Declare, so I think Declare <laughs> may now just force the heart king-queen out. Mm -hmm. That seems like the most efficient method to making his contract, and he will end up with an over trick now. You may, the space might wind up getting Locked if the defense, let's say, like, say the Jack Hearts North wins and plays another, plays a diamond. You win the King of Diamonds, unblock the Ace of Clubs, play another heart, and they win and play a spade. Now, now the, now you can't take three spade tracks because they're blocked. But you do take nine tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. We'll see if the defense ends up entangling any sort of tricks for Declare in the end position or not. He has to cash the Ace of Clubs here or a third diamond from North strands the King of Clubs. Yep. So he has to cash the Ace of Clubs. And now North knows what's going on. So when North leads, wins the heart, uh, as long as, I mean, even if, I guess there's just, the hearts are just, the spades are just gone. Yep. Right, North can win a heart and play back a heart and the spades are still blown. Mm-hmm. Is there a case where you could let South win the uh, win the Queen of Spades to lead away from the Queen of Clubs? Double on me? I guess you could. Oh, that that would still be the fourth defensive trick. That's true. <laughs> it, would be, it would be a more exciting way to get to know. If, if you wanted to be fancy. And risk your contract. Yes. <laughs> if you're one of those fancy contract riskers. <laughs> I believe we call it a practice end play, <laughs> similar to the practice finesse. <laughs> so south has the club guard, north has the spade guard, which means the squeeze will not develop as Declare caches his tricks here. And Declare will do that, then will play the jack of hearts and then the diamonds and hope that someone will squeeze in the black suits. Right. All right, so push board. Rosenthal still maintains their four amp lead. We got one board left to play in the set. And I vaguely recall the last board having a little bit of excitement. It feels like it's been an hour since we came from the other table. <laughs> um, pace of play in this room is a little bit slower than it was over there. There's only one spade out of it, so they're claiming. <laughs> so last hand of the third quarter, and then we'll take a short break. We'll be back in about 15 minutes. No promises on that this time. I, th I think I said that after the first quarter of play, and there was an hour break <laughs> um, between sets. But hopefully we'll be back soon. This last board is an interesting bidding decision for East-West, uh, where they um, have a slightly favored slam, potentially, in a minor, but it's, uh, it's one of these awkward hands to bid where there's some shape and um, and only moderate extra values. Mm -hmm. And someone and, and an auction where someone might jump to 3 no jump early and jam it. Yeah, and here we are. So six clubs, the aforementioned slam in a minor suit. Does seem to be a favorable contract. 
club splitting or the singleton north queen coming one heart. The other room north overhauled a heart and north south bid one heart and two hearts and that convinced east to jump to three no early mm -hmm. um here it looks like east bid one heart one heart showing spades and west bid one spade which they they must play as showing three card spade support otherwise yep. i would imagine the west would do something else yeah it's my preferred treatment to have one spade show three there uh, rather than just two or two plus mm-hmm Yeah, so he's just has a minimum game forcing hand, and we'll have to see how he deals with that. I mean, maybe just to jump to three no trump directly, although obviously this East West pair plays a fairly sophisticated system. So I, I imagine that two no must be forcing mm -hmm. if he's dead <laughs> with his hand, because uh, given the, the, uh, they, they, they didn't enter this event to stop in partials. Right, and now three diamonds from West should confirm heart shortness, just patterning out. I mean, you might expect West to be three one four five in shape for this action, but three one three six is what he actually holds. And, and I th think that opposite that East is going to bid three no Trump mm -hmm. because his, he, he has no honors in the minors and he has two heart stoppers. Right. So the question is whether West can find another call over that, but I, I would be surprised if East did something other than three no Trump. I've been surprised before though. <laughs> okay, so color me surprised. Maybe three diamonds shows extra values, but even so I would. Yeah, the, I mean, the aces look like nice cards. That's true, and the queen, queen ten of spades, ready to be good cards. And in fact, the ten of spades is one of the things that, uh, and the queen of hearts being potentially finessable are, are two things that make slam uh, as good as it is. Yeah, someone's brought up that might not have a dime. Sure. If East West are playing a fairly light opening style, which I actually don't recall. It's been claimed that they open 10 counts pretty regularly. Maybe East 2 no Trump is actually just invitational. So West is going to have to react to that three hearts somehow. And if West is trying to waffle about three no Trump, they could always bid three spades. But I, I still feel like West has a little bit more extra than he's already shown. And he hasn't really shown the real club length of his hand yet. So I. Assuming that they're in natural bidding at this point, I would think that four clubs by West would be indicated here. And now you might actually get to slam. Yeah, I think you're right. The four club bid would pave an easy path for East West to start Q bidding. Although counter to that, if West bids four clubs and East doesn't Q bid the diamond king, West might be a little worried about his ace jack third of diamonds. I. I think it might just go four clubs, five clubs, six clubs, or maybe if it goes four clubs pass, four no trump, if they play some kind of turbo, or if four no trump there just shows a good raise to five clubs. Mm -hmm. Which some people do. Um, I mean, I, I don't know that East loves his hand. Right? So West has bid a very slow three spades, which um, I assume East is going to bid three no now. Because... And now if West two steps it to four clubs, West has to... West, when, when West was... Bidding his slow three spades, he should have also been thinking about what he was going to do over three now. Yep. I would hate a slow... As an opponent, I, I feel a little annoyed by a slow three spades followed by a tank over three now. Fortunately, I don't think there's any uh, UI from West. Three no Trump feels pretty... At least the Vugraph operator made us think that three no Trump came pretty quickly. So East not putting any extra pressure on his partner, at least. Right. I mean, East had a really obvious 3 no bit, so almost like he bit it too fast. But I guess he had <laughs> plenty of time to think about what he was going to do while his partner was tanking it. Yeah. And West has let it go in 3 no Tron. And Slam is only, like, marginally good. And if you look peek at North-South cards, then it's very, very good. But uh, Right. If you just look at your own cards, it's not quite as good. Uh, so 3 no is kind of a normal spot. I would expect most people to get there. Yeah, and now that North-South haven't found their heart fit, South might actually lead a low diamond, which will work out quite nicely for their side. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean if I'm if on a low diamond lead, I'm. I, mean, I guess you could go down against King Queen Ten Fifth of Diamonds by popping the Ace if they have a club entry. But I feel like I pop the Ace of, Ace of Diamonds, cash the Ace of Clubs, cross the Ace of Spades, and finesse the Jack of Clubs for safe into the safe hand, so that if North has a diamond to return, then they're breaking. Hmm. And uh, but I, what I don't want to do is finesse the diamond and have North play a heart with the King offside. So I'm popping the Ace of Diamonds. And then I think I take a club finesse for safety into the north hand. So, so if north has another, unless the lead was a singleton, north's not going to be able to cash diamonds. Well, the 10 of diamonds dropping is means I don't need to do that. Now I have a diamond stock. Yeah, Declare is going to be very happy about that 10 of diamonds. So now so. he plays clubs from the top. That 10 of diamonds costs the defense probably three tricks, at least two tricks. Mm -hmm. well, probably three. I think Declare would have would have taken a club finesse and then lost the king queen of diamonds for for just barely making mm -hmm. instead declares he's got six clubs and the diamond is seven heart is eight three spades is 11. and south's gonna south may be sad on one of the clubs not sure yeah, I mean, I in, in a match safe. point field, we would definitely see 12 tricks, at least um, 12 tricks from here. Right. So Declare can cash the hard ace now, which would have squeezed that south. That the nine of spades, though. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Vugrap like, operator wow, teasing kind of a us. Big play. <laughs> like, really, Declare thought that the finesse the nine of spades was indicated. It was not clear to me. <laughs> All right, so 11 tracks, and uh, I guess that's one imp back to McAllister to make it a uh, three imp difference with 15 boards to go. So yeah. they need to pick up, uh, what, one fifth of an amp board. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can only score whole imps over here. So, <laughs> but yes. All right. Well, thank you, Michael, for joining me. All right. I'll uh, be back in, uh, I don't know, about 20 minutes or so, or whatever we think the break's going to be. Sounds good. Stay tuned, everyone. All right. All right. Twitch chat. I am back. Well, ish. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, you can't see me. So you don't actually know if I exist. I'm just like a woo ghost voice, but here I am. I'm here. Yeah, Dan asks if we can watch um, Matt and Steve in quarter four. We were following their table, but they were much too fast for the action in this room. And it was a 27-27 tie over this set. Wait. Oh, we got an adjustment? I don't know what happened on board 15. Three no trump making 10 tricks. Well, so be it. So two imps, and that makes it a tie. Rosenthal's still up by two. I forgot to do a prediction. I will try and do a prediction for the next segment. You know what we can do? I can start the prediction now so I don't forget. Who will win? Hmm. Let's not confuse things. Who's going to win the match? It is going to be McAllister or Rosenthal. Boom. There we go. Get your votes in if you want. No requirement. In the meantime, I can try and update the scoreboard. <laughs> and we can take a look at the scoreboard, see if there's any exciting results to report. Leibowitz is losing to Dyson right now. Wow. After three segments. So Nickel still maintains a pretty sizable lead of 50. Team Switzerland and Lien haven't finished 
quarter three yet. Fleischer and Gupta. There might be a concession soon. Rosenthal and McAllister, we've just been following. That one is... Well, it's listed at 70 to 66. I don't know what the actual result is. I'll leave it up. Wolfson and Zhang is fairly close. Street and Tulin. Oh my god. Actually, we have two teams who are currently sitting on 69 imps. That's nice. Leibowitz is close. They're down by two, but that's kind of a big deal. Ah, Ash has made a comeback. That is the highest scoring match. Both teams are over 100 imps. I really wanted to watch that one today. Dan still thinks it's Lebowitz, not Leibowitz. You're probably right. Milner against Kane. Kane has rung the bell. They have hit the 100 imp mark. Goodman and Hill. Oh, Goodman has taken another lead in the third quarter. 98-82. They're up by 16. Rombo Niedebach could be another concession in favor of Rombo, the French team. And supposedly all of my French viewers are off watching France play against England in football. Bathurst Goldberg probably not concession worthy. And Hans has tanked a bunch of their lead. They were up 45. Now they're only up 21 over Milne. But those are most of the updated results. Oh, I should probably... Uh... After quarter three. Is that how I should say it? After quarter three scores? Maybe. Well, that's what I'm going to leave it at. So we have one, two, three, four matches that are not updated yet. Switzerland against Lean. We don't have a third quarter score. Bernal against Hammond. We don't have Juster against Hoskins. I guess I can pull this up. Let's back out for a second. Make sure that none of the other tables are playing yet. Bailey against Simpson is currently tied. Weren't they tied? No, they weren't tied. Oh my god, but what happened? Look at look at the the Bailey against Simpson was 6256 at halftime and now the score is 6666. They've scored all of 14 imps in one quarter of play. <laughs> That's an insanely low scoring match. Let's do side bets. I mean, there is a there is a side bet. It is it is the Twitch chat side bet. <laughs> or channel point side bet. Soccer score for a side bet. I don't know what the soccer match is. You already spent all your channel points. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> you're, you're trying to hedge your bets now. Sup also hedging the bridge winner's bracket, betting on McAllister. Let me look at Germany, France, soccer. Wait, what? Uh, I thought ATN was in here earlier saying that France was playing Germany. I, what I'm currently looking at is France against Germany is happening on, oh God, no one can see this, um, happening on Saturday. So I don't know if that's actually true.
Well, I saw Craig was here. Uh, Craig is on his plane flight home. <clears throat> he did say hello in the BBO chat for a minute, but he will be joining us tomorrow. The football match, I'm going to call it football because I'm pretty sure most of my um, <laughs> viewers are not from the US. <laughs> so the football match is not today. <laughs> Zapstiff has overwhelming confidence in the Rosenthal team that they're going to pull it out. He said France, England, did he? Hold on. Hold on. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait just a second. <laughs> All right, well, I have no idea what's going on in the soccer match. Let me try and get some updated scoreboard point totals. Ooh, third quarter is finished in every room. Just gonna make sure that we don't have fourth quarter match her action starting yet. Okay, so what were the four <laughs> scores that I don't have updated? Uh-oh. Uh, Switzerland against Lean, which is 124 to 90 in favor of Team Switzerland, AKA Team Zimmerman. We were missing Juster Hoskins, I think. Oh, Bernal Hammond, here we go. Hammond has a 20 imp lead there. Juster Hoskins. Hoskins is leading that match. I think I might have picked them. And then what was the last one? Bailey Simpson, maybe? Yes. Ooh, someone picked up big late in that set. Simpson ended up picking up big. They're ahead by 17. Could have been a slam swing. <laughs> Holy! Hey, whoever wants to bet on Rosenthal, you're getting good odds now. <laughs> 119k on McAllister. <clears throat> Was that you, Gandolius? They could take it. I don't know the biggest win that McAllister's had, but this could be up there. I know McAllister does tend to end up sitting as like low 20s or somewhere to high 30 seed, um, tends to be where they end up in these events. And they've made it somewhat deep in some of these runs, but most of the time I think they end up beating up on some of the other 20 and 30 rank seeds on the way there. <clears throat> <laughs> sending Helgamo a DM and asking for more revokes. That would be a really sad way to lose the match. Hey, Sam. How's it going? Oh, man. I have the YouTube chat up on screen. I have been watching. Um, but I must have missed Jam and Jammin's. No, Zia. I don't think, is Zia even playing? So Zia 
often plays with um, Mechstroth, but Mechstroth is playing with Berkowitz now. Or at least he is in this event. I don't think I saw Zia on any of the teams. Trying to keep up with the Vanderbilt, but it's very hard. Wait, what does that mean? All of the information is r right over here. There are scores, uh, which you can totally find for yourself in, fewer, in less time than it would take for it to scroll by just looking at bridge winners. But yeah, all the information is here. So what are surprising matches? IMO. I mean, I'm surprised that Rosenthal and McAllister is close. I'm kind of surprised that Switzerland lean is a little close. Matt, thanks so much for the gift sub. Really appreciate it. Congrats, Eric on winning the gift sub. <laughs> Gantolius recommends betting on Rosenthal for more channel points. Maybe everyone's hoping that the table will open up. Here we go, Rosenthal McAllister. Uh, it was asked of me to watch the kids play. Uh, Steve Rain and um, Matt Weingarten being the kids. Neither of which I believe is actually a kid. Anyway, stay tuned chat. I'm headed over to BBO. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the fourth quarter of action. Actually, I apologize. I saw the nameplates headed into this room. I It was requested that I go do commentary for the other table. So if you want to stick with me, head over to the other room. Unless you said the other table, I should probably check. Hey, oh, goodbye, Michael. <laughs> I'm I'm very confused. We have the same players at both tables. Um, I'm I'm gonna stick around here. Welcome back, Michael. I I'm going for the other table, which is also Brown, McAllister, Bakke, and Brooklyn. That's what I was very confused about, and <laughs> I think I'm just gonna stick with this table at least for the time being. Seems like the uh, players may have some sort of multiple personality thing going on. <laughs> yes. Well, we come in in the middle of, I guess, a pretty normal four heart contract that East West have ended up in, but it was not a particularly standard auction getting here. Let's see. It looks like the cards do not lie well for the declaring side. Pass no, pass. Trump's splitting badly. King of Diamonds offside. Diamond two clubs, double four clubs by North. That's a big bid. I guess King Queen. Oh, he, he had the King of Clubs in addition. Okay, he had, he had four clubs, King Queen, and a singleton. Not as big a bid as I initially thought. Um, yeah, he's doubling four clubs is is a lot, and so they have wound up stretched to four hearts. And they have a club, a diamond, a heart, and a spade to lose and handling charges. Right. I, I think there might be some chances to make this if you were double dummy, right? Pick off the king doubleton of diamonds. You can run the diamond suit to pitch your spade losers. But declare is going to have some difficulty doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Gib is close at double dummy. I would think that the four trumps would foil 
such plans. But um, yeah, ace of diamonds and a low diamond would be uh, quite a play. Clear is actually kind of not thrilled by things right now. No, he's he shorter than the West Hand, uh, the South Hand. Yeah, he might suspect the King of Diamonds is likely to be offside. I mean, given that North made this preemptive four club bid. Um, and then let the King of Clubs. Yeah, has already turned up with the King of Clubs, which doesn't necessarily promise the Queen, but I think is likely to have that card. A lot of players will lead a high honor from a long holding in partner suit when you know partner is legitimately good in that suit, like here the partner overcalled two clubs, in case you need to lead something through dummy a trick two. Yep. If someone has a singleton and you lead low, well then you're done and you can't get back in. But if you lead the king, then you might be able to shift productively. Yeah, so the players pulled a round of trumps and this trick looks suspicious for a large number of reasons. Yeah, well, the Ten of Hearts is sort of like uh, quite a false card, but I, some people do it, but most people don't. It's, I, my experience is that Ten tends to be an honest card. Mm -hmm. So Wes knows he's, he's in heaps of trouble at this point. I mean, presumably, Ace of Diamonds and a Low Diamond is still enough. It might not be, though. Well, let's say you play Ace of Diamonds and a Low Diamond, and I mean, if if, uh, if West if South just plays Ace of Trumps and a Trump, you could win, draw the last Trump, cross the Ace of Spades, run the Diamonds, but that it's not enough tricks. Right? Yeah, it, it really is. You get three pitches. So, but but South can counter this by um, forcing dummy and clubs, getting in with the hard ace, and then forcing declare in clubs. Clubs, um, of course, both hands. Yeah. So it looks like even if West becomes omniscient somehow, he's still going to end up going down against best defense. And I suppose you could play a low diamond rather than ace and a diamond. Also works against a double tin king, mm -hmm. but doesn't but retains communication in the diamond suit. Yeah. But the same defense of continuing clubs every time you get in will still work. Right. You know, Assuming we have just butchered our analysis, which is always a possibility. <laughs> um, yeah, Michael, I was going to ask you, I, I don't know how in tune you are with the where everyone is playing these days on which teams, but I noticed that um, Mech Stroth is playing with Berkowitz, David Gold was playing with Simon Cope. I think those are two of Zia's common partners. I haven't seen him in this event. Do you happen to know if he's just taken yeah. an event off or was playing on a different team? I do not know. Let me, um, one way to do that is to go to live.acbl.org and look up the uh, bulletin, which is what I'm doing right now, and then search the Daily Bulletin for the keyword Zia. <laughs> and it'll probably show up as like a previous event winner or something. It showed up seven, Zia showed up seven times the bulletin, but none of them for uh, an entry into this event. So it looks like maybe Zia is not at Nationals. Mm -hmm. Interesting. He uh, does not voluntarily take time away from playing bridge in my experience. He's nothing he'd rather do with his life than play bridge, so <laughs> I hope he's well. Yeah. I do also. I missed the play here. Declare let a low diamond. De Declare took a diamond finesse, as we might have expected. Um, 
a simpler attempt to try and make the contract if the King of Diamonds was just on side. So south won and played a low trom. Mm -hmm. Now North has a diamond stopper, so I think Declare may be in even more trouble. Yeah, so a club rough, East now gets to play a couple of diamonds. And is there a way for South to get this a couple of tricks? Um, South pitches on the Jack of Diamonds. He's trying to run out of things to pitch. South pitches his spade there. And then declared his spade finesse mm -hmm. for an extra trick. Yeah, South Ruff to West pitched. Is that what it happened? I guess this is good enough now, with North having that ten of diamonds. Um, South will score the trump ace, and North will get either a spade or a diamond trick. Oh, I think maybe the play got lost somehow. I see. I see. All was put in. It did look like down two to me, though. The position they were in certainly looked like down two. Yeah, right, I've, I've been one. getting bombarded with questions about the nameplates, and I'm sorry to everyone who's watching, I have no idea who's sitting in which seat. Um, we suspect McAllister's team is east-west, and Rosenthal's team's north-south, but we're not sure about that. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's that. hopefully those are at least correct. They have changed the nameplates in the other room now, so... Maybe this room is correct. You can probably tell by the tempo of some of the play plays. Oh, that's true as well. Um, right, so that's a very normal one spade bid nowadays. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, one, eleven count with shortness not in spades and five controls. Yeah. Excellent and one I, spade opener. I have extras if I'm opening that one spade in my partnerships. So, and I expect this is also a gazilli auction. Mm -hmm. And so it's two diamonds to show seven plus or something. It depends on how light. Um... Well, that wasn't a gazilli auction, it seems. Yeah, I guess, I guess so, it wasn't. You know what? This is not Bakke and Broglin, maybe. If that's not a gazilli auction. Well, well, who, no one passes two clubs with the south hand. <laughs> Even if you're not playing gazilli, who would pass two clubs? Would two, everyone would be two spades. <laughs> It looks effective. I mean, even if, you know, I mean, I suppose if, if one was non-forcing and two clubs promised four, maybe you pass two clubs. Well, they do actually play that in some partnerships where one no is not forcing over one of a major. Yeah, this all seems unbelievable, but Baki and Brogland were playing Gazilli in the last set. Am I just making that up, or it was them, we, right? We were watching. Yes, they they were. <laughs> it would be weird to play at one set and not the next. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right on that. <laughs> that I, they must be playing Gazilli, and South decided, his, I don't know, as you say, two spades seems like the normal bid. There are a few possibilities. McAllister might actually be North-South. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Which is kind of like the scariest possibility. Um, certainly I could believe that Bakke and Roland are not North-South and that it's... I, I can't imagine Lincoln and Helgamo passing two clubs there. Assuming they're in. They must be in. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, something weird's happening. I agree. There was no alert on two clubs, so if the Vugraph operator's on top of the alerts, then 
the two club bid is just natural non-forcing and maybe Brooklyn decided with six high card points in the red suits let's not push the auction anymore um, I'm just so confused me too Normally I'm okay with that. Normally I'm okay with being confused. <laughs> Everything's very friendly on this hand, so... Declare Celeste will lose two clubs and a heart. He's already lost three trucks. Is Declare really not rough the ace of diamonds? I'm a little more surprised Declare ended up pitching a spade rather than a heart. On the... None of this is... Honestly, none of this is making sense. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Is it going to be another like, think, one of those days? I, I think they're actually in two spades, is my theory. Oh, oh my god. That makes... Everything makes sense now. Of course they're in two spades. He did rough the second diamond. He played a spade, right? That was roughing the... Yes. You're, you're totally right. <laughs> and the view graph operator's like... How come the wrong hand's on lead all the time? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I get it. So all that's been missed is South did, in fact, bid two spades over two clubs. Apologies to all the viewers. All right. I feel less confused now. <laughs> I, I, I'm still impressed that I'm, I'm less confused than the view ref operator. <laughs> I'm glad they're on a delay so they can't hear me bad-mouthing them. <laughs> we think that the VUGRAPH operators are wonderful because they're allowing us to be here and watch the event. If they weren't around, then we wouldn't be able to do that. My theory is that at some point a score is going to get inputted for this deal. <laughs> you think that some might resolve the confusion? So yeah, uh, kind of oddly enough, no matter who wins the third club, and no matter what they lead, Declare's two heart losers are going to get compressed into one. If Declare ever gets access to that Diamond King, then they can pitch a heart. And otherwise, the defense is going to have to break this heart suit where they have the Ten and Jack in opposite hands. And even if East wins it, plays the Ten of Hearts, it goes Queen. Mm -hmm. West can't dock, or the King of Diamonds is there, so they have to win the ace, and then West is in play. Yeah. If they lead, East leads the low hearts to the jack, then North wins the King of Finesse the eight of hearts. So, yeah, they're... they're um... Well, assuming this is the cards that people actually have left, which I have no idea if it really is. <laughs> that's <laughs> a good point. Win with the Trump suit. Yeah, that, that's a good point. I'm still just waiting for a score to be inputted. Mm -hmm. This is not making it, doesn't really matter whether it's clubs or spades, but I assume there's going to be like a whispering, like, uh, what's the contract? What was the result? <laughs> I'll say down one or down two, and then I'll just go, all right, down. So, yes, seven okay. tricks makes sense. That would mean East West took two clubs, two spades, a diamond, and one heart. And a very nicely played hand by North, uh, Christian Bakke, for managing that end play. So, so this is one of my uh, my favorite games. Is um, guess what error has happened between the viewgraph operator and and the and the, uh, and the table? Yeah. So I think we won that round, but let's see if we can uh, we can avoid that game for future for the rest of the session. Right. Well. Rosenthal does pick up two imps for their trouble. What does Bakke do when they open a strong no trump in front of him? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Um, penalty double anyone? A lot of players will play penalty doubles of third seat one no trump opening bids, especially third seat non vulnerable strong no trump opening bids, even if they don't otherwise, because. A lot of players have a little fun with their opposition in third position, 
not vulnerable. Yeah, everyone knows a no Trump in third seed is like 12 to 17 or so. Well, West has it, and South is South is like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I think North will get two spades here, and um, I don't think anyone's going to be any war. South's two heart bid was a transfer, right? <laughs> yes. You have know, that missionary where a partner says transfer, and but I, I think, uh, fortunately, with screens, they didn't have to worry about any of that. No. Maybe they do. For all those people, when they bid two hearts, then partner says transfer, and they bid two spades, and then they bid again with a hand like Souths. Uh, no, you really don't. You bid two hearts, and if partner bids two spades, you pass. <laughs> Someone had asked me if I if, about the north-south methods. I nothing was alerted. I'm assuming everything was natural. The doubles penalty and two hearts and two spades were natural. Yeah, it looks that way. Other table did get a little bit too high. They got to three spades, but it looks like it's not going to matter with this opening club lead. Um, that's going to give Declare four club tricks to go with his five trumps. So won the board in both the auction and the play here. Another pickup for Rosenthal. And the club lead seems passive. Turned out uh, it did some of Declare's work for him, but that seems pretty random to me. Is there something to be said when partner has a strong no trump to leading um, from an honor? That That's what I think, um, that Normally, like if your partner had opened, say, one club or one diamond, of course, you just lead their suit. Um, but if your partner's open a strong no trump, they tend to have honors in almost every suit. And so leading from a bunch of small cards is a little bit uh, less attractive than leading away from honors because that queen of diamonds or king of hearts, you're likely to catch partner with the ace or the king or the jack and you might be able to set up tricks in this suit without losing anything, whereas the club lead, passive enough, could de give Declare a free finesse, or at least a guess. Yeah. And, and you also, you're looking at six high card points and a dummy that ran from, uh, from one of Trump double to two hearts. Mm -hmm. So you suspect the dummy is probably not going to have a whole lot of stuff, so you don't want to give any, any extra transportation on your opening lead. So if you knew what lead would blow a trick, of course you'd choose it, but so are, are your goal is to choose the lead least likely. Uh, so let, let's suppose you get a very similar auction in the other room. Without looking, can you guess what Helgamo led from the east hand on that I would guess board? the uh, diamond four. He led the jack of spades. Wrong again, me. <laughs> So he also kind of decided he wanted to make a passive lead, and he thought the Jack of Trumps was the most passive, which worked out just fine. I mean, if Dummy doesn't have an entry, I suppose Declare will be forced to drop your Jack a lot of the time when they have a holding like King, Queen, Dan, Sext. Mm -hmm. um, and if partner has something like King, Third, you're, they play low on your Jack, and they're still going to score their King later. Yeah. So maybe he's right. Well, South has a passed hand. North does get to pass his partners. One of the major response here with three. So they get to the four three fit at a safe level. I mean, the North hand is a kind of normal opening bid and is not hopeless to, to think your side might have game after a pass, pass a diamond, pass a spade if partner has short diamonds, for example, and five spades. Uh, so pass is a little tight to me. I might have bid two spades, but uh, then again, maybe bidding is just too aggressive. So I did notice something, given that East have a has a five card spade suit and 11 high card points, and decided not to take a call over the diamond opener. How do you feel? Yeah. You think the spade suit is just too weak? 
partners a past hand, so game is unlikely when you're balanced like this. So if you're playing with Mac, you better bid one spade there, because if he, he hates it when his partners don't bid their suits. <laughs> um, I, the spade suit's a little anemic, partners a past hand, so I don't really think we have game. Against that, I'd rather bid one spade now than have it to bid two spades after it goes a diamond pass, a heart pass, two hearts to me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I could go either way, but I think I think I bid one spade there. Yeah. But I, I don't hate the pass. Like, you kind of know they're bidding one spade at the other table, so. Yep. Well, opening club lead goes around to the 10 and South's queen. The hand is somewhat friendly for Declare, given that they have most of the high spade spots. King of Hearts is on side. West probably imagines on opening lead that declares likely to be in a 5-3 fit, given that his partner didn't bid. Player almost hopes this heart finesse loses so they have transportation back to the Jack of Hearts. Mm -hmm. But they should be able to get back with a spade. Like, if he goes ace of spades, yeah. spade here, they'll be able to win the queen and then decide what to do in clubs. Yeah. Yeah, so, so Claire is basically from this position, is, has taken two tricks. They have three more spade tricks in their hand, gets to the five, a club rough and dummy is six, and the ace of hearts is seven. Mm -hmm. And that is the number of counting that they need to get to. It definitely is. So this is going to be another pickup to Rosenthal, assuming Declare does make his contract here, because they made a no trump in the other room, east-west. Presumably east over called a spade and west bit a no trump. Mm -hmm. That was that. Well, not a good start for the McAllister squad. Obviously, Rosenthal is going to be very pleased. Right, they now need more than two tenths of an imp of board <laughs> to have uh, given up <laughs> 12 imps over the first four boards. 13 imps. This is uh, five away or four away? Uh, this should be five. Those who know the imp tables better than me can do these things faster. Do I actually know the imp tables better? I think 130 to 160 is four, if I'm correct. And with East West never touching trumps, Declare, I guess in theory, could make an overtrick here. Well, East has shucked a club. Mm -hmm. But Declare has spade spots to rough clubs with. Six of Hearts is high right now. It is. <laughs> Which is going to cause East a little bit of discomfort. Let's see if Declare is a spot watcher and knows it. <laughs> tries to steal that six of hearts through. Well, Wes finally does get the spade switch on the table. And so as long as McAllister pulls a couple of trumps, I mean, even if he doesn't, Declare doesn't have several fast entries to take two club roughs, but... Um, it now does seem as if Declare is going to end up with seven tricks and only seven tricks. Now see, that's a good partner as West, right? You pitch the three of hearts so your partner knows the six is high. Oh, uh, Declare does too. <laughs> Uh, 
None of it. None of it actually matters. No. But this, error of six is for this truck. Yeah, this will be five M. So off to oh, thirteen. He pitched. Oh, the six of hearts cashed. Oh no. And Oops. it does not cost any extra imps. <laughs> I'm sure East will be pleased to learn that after the hand. But that's one spade making two. So a part score battle. He's not thinking they're claiming. Yeah, they're just claiming the eight tricks. Five imps going the way of Rosenthal. And a 13 at nothing start to this segment. They still have 11 boards to play, and the lead is not insurmountable. Just 17. But east-west in this room, or north-south in the other, are going to have to find a way to generate some results. And it looks like this is not going to be one of them, with east-west in the other room getting off to four spades making on their cards. So does North open with the 5431 crappy 11 with short spades? I mean, I say maybe crappy is an overstatement. It has three jacks with two aces, so sort of conflicting, and then the spots are so. So the answer is yes, North does open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Short spades and the awkward pattern with the four hearts and five diamonds might lead me to pass it because I don't like the auction of diamond pass a spade pass very much. Mm -hmm. Well, East has gotten in there in this auction. And if we contrast it to the previous board where East decided not to overcall a spade, unfavorable with the 11 count with five spades. This is definitely a better hand. Um, the but three club seems like it must be some sort of mixed raise and diamonds or something. Yes. Which could give West a two-stepper here by doubling three clubs and then later bidding three spades. He just bids three spades. How? The main thing is that West didn't give up. And East with a six spade and, and a real overhaul. I imagine we'll bid game and hope it makes. Right. Yeah, I'm wondering about five diamonds. I mean, how bad is it for North South? It looks like it's down two. They lose a heart, two clubs, heart, and a trump. A diamond and two clubs. Yeah, down two. So I don't think North is going to take action. He doesn't. He kind of quickly passes it out. He has two aces, some defense. Partner's three club bid suggests some defense, which makes sense. They can beat four spades if they get off to heart leads, which is, of course, very challenging. They have to not play any diamonds, right? Yes. Otherwise, Declare can get to the king of diamonds with the king of clubs to pitch a heart. Yeah. That's a really tough opening lead. <laughs> I, I agree. And the ace of spades isn't good enough because Declare can just run the clubs, try yep. to run the clubs. Yeah. So you have to lead a heart at trick one. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'd find it, but I, mean, I, I suppose it's not impossible. Jack of Hearts, a really cool idea. Um, not good enough here, but swap that King and Queen of Hearts, and we're in business <laughs> as a surrounding play, looking at that 10 third of Hearts and Dummy. So Declare does need to cross in clubs to get that quick pitch yep. from the King of Diamonds. And now can go to work on the Trump suit. So Ten of Spades will fetch the Ace. King of Spades will also fetch the Ace. Five of Spades. So what Chris Wilankin would say about uh, about uh, I don't know, I'm confusing Chris with uh, his former partner uh, Aaron Silverstein would say about a board like this: it's a board on the floor. Mm -hmm. When you're at, when you're ahead, every time something like this happens, another board on the floor. Yep. Trying to run out the clock. 
Yeah, four spades is a great result on the ace-west cards. Unfortunately, it was duplicated in the other room. Well, depending on which side you're on, unfortunately. I'm on the side of having a tie match going into the last board, so I will always be <laughs> rooting for the team that's down. <laughs> I feel like that's my job as a commentator, to keep all, everyone interested in the match until the very end. But with 10 boards to play, they need to pick up 17 more imps to make the comeback. This looks like this is going to be one of those low-level part score battles. I don't think anyone can make much of anything. Right. There's no great fit anywhere. North-South kind of have their best fits probably at the 5-2 heart fit. And East-West's best fit is diamonds, which don't break. It looks to me like East-West end up in a no trump. Um, North... Well, let's see it. North opened that last hand, did not open the 5 4 3 1 10 count with a stiff queen. Mm -hmm. Diamond to spade and no trump seems like a fairly normal option, except North's going to double a diamond pass a spade. And maybe who wins the race to one no trump? East or South? Well, I'm sure South is hoping it's not him. <laughs> but uh, you could be right. Unfortunately, as East, the only way to get, really get the opponents here is to pass the double, and he does. I, I do like this bid. East has a maximum one diamond opener, well, for his weak no trump range. I don't think East can really do anything about one no trump, though. And it's, well, he did hit it. That That's actually a little surprising to me that he doubled one no trump. The way my partners respond to my one diamond, I wouldn't be sure the opponents hadn't missed game in this auction. <laughs> well, if South really had a hand, South would have been 2 now, I guess. Right? And North is a past hand. All right, so South might have, like, a pretty good hand and not bid 2 no because he's opposite a past hand. Yeah. South might have, like, 13 or something and just choose one no. South has nowhere to go. I mean, North could, if North panics and bids two hearts, but I don't think North's going to go anywhere. I don't, North's, North kind of has the values for his bid and has bad heart spots. Yeah, well, one question is, is West going to go somewhere? Where's West going? Two diamonds, I guess. Because one on doubled isn't game. It happens to make. I wonder how they feel about their first five boards. <laughs> I don't think it's good. Well, let's see. Um, board one was. They got a little high. They definitely got high on board one. They can't like that. Board two was kind of. They beat something that was kind of normal. Board three, they led the wrong thing, but Claire was always making two spades. West they, does pass. Okay, well, here we go. Fair. That's the next thing. Let's say West leads the two diamonds. It's like a good start for the defense. Yeah, blood is going to be spilled on this one. There is a diamond lead. So conventionally, it looks like they're playing second best here. Declare's not going to win trick one just because he doesn't want to be on lead. I mean, maybe as Declare, you win and just put the Ten of Hearts on the table and hope something good happens. But, yeah, I, I think you're right. Something good is happening in the spade suit for Declare, mm -hmm. but not in the heart suit. The clubs... Clubs are a little awkward. You can't do clubs yourself. Clubs are kind of... Whatever side plays clubs is going to blow a trick. Right. It's called a frozen suit if neither side could play it. Without blowing a track. Mm -hmm. If 
I mean, it's interesting to me that it looks like the defense can also play on spades and develop tricks there because of the spade spots where West has the 10 and the 8 and the 9 is short. Yep. So East could actually, if East, say, wins the King of Diamonds and plays Ace of Spades, Queen of Spades, gives Declare two spade tricks, but it will also set up um, two spade tricks for the defense. Or, set up, or one spade trick for the defense, right? Eventually. Assuming West can get in tw twice. Which isn't clear. Well, it may force Declarer to sever the hands, right? So if it goes like Ace of Spades, Queen of Spades. I guess if West, when West gets in, they play a third round of spades, then the hands are, north south hands are kind of severed. This is not going to be a fast hand. No. Um. I, I haven't hit the double dummy solver yet. So what's what's your best guess for a result? Oh, I, I, I never play? look at double dummy. Don't tell me. Maybe I should I just like... Looked take my earphones out if you want to talk to the, the viewers, but my, my guess is down two um, is where we're going to end up. If you want to get me to guess double dummy, I would say one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think we're going to wind up a down one. But I bet down two is going to be like in red at some point <laughs> during the course of the play. Yeah, one no con trump contracts generally take a while to play, even at imps, certainly at match points. And one no trump doubled is going to take a lot longer to play. Um, maybe we should put an over under at the amount of time that it'll take to play oh, the same. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. Um. It's currently 13 minutes. 6 51 p.m. So you're you're wagering 704 is where you're gonna take the line. Uh, 13 um, minutes from now. Okay. They've already taken about five minutes. Yeah. I will I'll take the under, but I'm not confident. <laughs> I did get a question about South having the option of instead of bidding a no trump, passing the double of one spade. That seems very risky to me, with weak spade spots, a partner who was unable to open in first seat, and the potential for West to have a fifth spade. I mean, if you told me a partner had three spades and one diamond, then yeah. Sure, yes. <laughs> right. Um, it just, that just seems... I mean, that, that's not the way people play bridge at high levels. They, mm -hmm. they don't. They, they, especially when you think you're the... You know, you're, you're ahead and you're a strong team. You don't want to like gamble boards ever. All right, he's played, so the under's starting to look uh, better. Yep, you called it. He does duck trick one. Um, the other table does have a result. One no trump, not doubled, down two by south. So it looks like McAllister is going to go with the defense that I thought of early of ace and queen of spades after winning trick one. Yeah, he might be worried that west has led from seven double ton of diamonds, I suppose. Yeah, or eight, seven, small, if they lead second best. Mm -hmm. Can't be sure of the location of the diamond ten. Right. But this, this is passive enough. He's not helping Declare by doing this. Declare was always entitled to these tricks. Yeah, and but it does help. It, it helps in a sense because now Declare doesn't need to use an entry to take a spade finesse or lead spades up. And I wonder if West had popped the ace of hearts and played back a third spade. Now, now Declare is feeling a lot of heat about the hands being severed. Mm -hmm. Right now, he still has communications. East plays a low, playing a low diamond here can bring that back into the picture. But he has to visualize the diamond ten and not the diamond eight in his partner's hand. Yeah, although the way this has gone, I, I mean, I like the Queen of Clubs switch from the East. I, I think this is a well thought out play. I think you're right. West may have made a small error in not covering the Ten of Hearts with the Ace, because now if Declare did get back to his hand with the Ace of Diamonds, he could lead a heart up, 
all the hearts would be good with the ace of clubs as an entry. So this is a nice play by East to try and like force out that club entry um, to North's hand. And no, the, it actually blew a trick to not cover the 10 of hearts with the ace. It's 10 of, mm -hmm. because the hearts do set up now. But it goes 10 of hearts, ace, small, small. East is still sitting there with queen, eight, fourth of hearts to dummies, king, jack, six. Right. The queen, eight, third of hearts to dummies, king, jack, six. And that's two defensive heart stoppers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So. Now what is East? They've taken four tracks. Uh, I think East definitely should continue his good work of, of playing another club. You gotta isolate that heart suit. No, he does switch to diamonds. So dummy will, it looks like this is gonna be down one because when Declare plays a heart up, West can play another diamond to cash the diamonds out, but dummy will just pitch their losing clubs on that mm -hmm. and uh, and that's that's it. Yeah, so it is down one and we have a push board after all that. And the unders were big winners. Oh wow, you're right. It was only about four or five minutes from prediction time. So in total, maybe about 10 minutes to play the hand. But after trick one, you know, it went pretty fast. I think fast. Brown and McAllister might have wanted to use some of that over-under time to, find, to defend a little differently. Mm. Really, I think once Matt Brown ended up not playing the Ace of Hearts, the defense didn't have a lot of options. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I do like the way McAllister ended up defending that Queen of Clubs switch, I think, was well thought out. Um, but Declare had the counter. Yeah, in the end, uh, I, McAllister went a meeting to find the Ten of Diamonds in his partner's hand anyways. Mm -hmm. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was just sort of like that second hand low was not the right. The second hand low needed to be overwritten by a cover and honor with an honor, considering the Ten of Hearts to be an honor. That's true, yeah. You don't always follow the rules. Second hand low, third hand high. So with the push forward, the lead still remains at 17. And interestingly, the double dummy solver says the ace of hearts is down one and the nine of hearts is down two on the 10. <laughs> but that the queen of clubs switch blew a trick, a low club switch was bad. Right, because the idea is the queen of clubs switch, now you can't continue, it will go into the club tennis, whereas a low club switch kind of doubly cuts communication in both hearts and clubs. Right, on a low club switch, if they duck partners in to play the tennis spades and finish the work of severing the hands, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then, I don't know, that's, that's it. the hearts are still set up. Well, a, a club to the king, if Declare ducks, then a second club oh, you comes saw through the club Yep. Yeah. It's, Yeah, I, I'm not going to fault McAllister for the Queen of Clubs switch. I think he was, you know, maybe hoping his partner's clubs were a little bit stronger, King Jack or something to that effect. Um, but he did have other alternatives which would have worked better. So this is an exciting hand. It really so is. The left hand is a really nice spade suit, and the east hand is a broken heart suit with extra strength, and north has jammed the auction. Yep. So East-West can make four spades, it looks like. They have play for five clubs, but I don't think that they, they no, five clubs needs the spade finesse, I think, which does not come in. Yeah, and I, I don't think they're going to have the opportunity to play either of those contracts, because I think South is pretty likely to find a big diamond bit here. South's got hearts nutted, though. Yeah. So South has sort of conflicting things. He has a huge diamond fit, but he also has hearts nutted. <laughs> so, I mean, if they, if they just defend the 3-0, then they can take five clubs in the ace of spades. They lead a heart. They uh, they don't take all of those tricks. They, 
they take uh, if Claire can take the first eight on a heart lead. Well, I'll tell you one thing: if East West don't make a game on this board, it's not just going to be a board on the floor. It's going to be a pile of imps going in the wrong direction for them, because once again. Uh, Helgamo and Wilenkin in the other room have done quite well to bid the spade game. Did they have a, like a jump response to one heart? Like, like was West able to bid two spades or something over one heart? Uh... <laughs> oh, East opened two hearts, some sort of specialized two heart bid? That, well, well, that is what happened. Right. <laughs> and... I don't know what that two. No one. That's like that. <laughs> Use your words. Are, are they like playing an Ackle two heart opening bit or something? <laughs> I don't know what the two heart opener was about. Again, it's been quite some time since I've taken a, a look at the Helgamo Wilenkin system notes. Um, but. I'm looking right now to see if it's whatever link they have. Um, that that didn't give it to me. Um, a steel convention card link gave me something very different. Um, I, there, there's the Helgen Hellness card, which does not have any sort of weak two like that. So the whatever they have for Helga mode does not have. Let's see what what Lincoln's a steel convention card is. Not found, so we don't know. It's it's a mystery. But what is equally mysterious is what is West going to do over four diamonds? I think West is going to bid four spades. That might make some sense. And th that spades was awfully nice. Well, he did. So well done, West. Yeah, the, the hand's not over. Have a chance to save. So is South going to bid five diamonds? South was not saving against four hearts, but four spades, on the other hand, he actually suspects this is making. Mm -hmm. He knows they don't have much in the way of diamond tricks, and they very likely only have one heart trick, unless they're getting a rough. The spade king might be on side if Claire needs a finesse. Yeah, I think there's actually... He probably doesn't have a rough coming either. Yeah, there's probably. I think you're about to hit on it. There's not going to be a heart rough because West would have bid four hearts if he had heart support. Right. And West passed three no trump to begin with, mm -hmm. and then bid four spades. Right. So it certainly doesn't sound like West has heart length. Yeah. Someone is asking if I'm sure that Bakke is north. No, we're not sure. Everyone thinks we're going to the set. <laughs> they might have just randomized the partnerships, put all the names into a hat, and drew out straws for <laughs> the set. To be honest, I'm not even sure the teams are sitting in different ways. They may find that Rosenthal's north, south in both rooms. Yeah. All right. Well, this. Now another board on the floor, right? I mean, it might be a one imp swing going the way of Rosenthal if North South do cash out, getting their heart diamond and king of spades. No, the player is going to play ace of trumps and a trump after this lead. He was going to do that anyways with the three and a trump bid. There is the ace of clubs, and I'm sure you're right, ace of spades and a spade makes sense. The south will definitely cash out after that line of play. So crisis dodged for McAllister, actually, where they do get to play four spades uninterrupted by north South kind of nice-looking five-diamond save. And even if Seth doesn't cash the Ace of Hearts, he's still going to get it later. Yeah, that's true. As long as he doesn't um, end up giving a pitch for the Eight of Diamonds. 
the singleton diamond into Clara's hand. So one imp going the way of Rosenthal there, who's still pitching a shutout about halfway through this set. We got eight boards to play. This could be an interesting one. Yeah, looking at the results from the other room, North-South went plus and a partial. And I think a lot of North-Souths are going to bid, would bid these two hands to gain. There's a, like the duplication in hearts and, uh, and diamonds make this sort of uh, an undesirable game to be in. Mm -hmm. have to play it with four spades where you're off two hearts, a club, and a spade for sure. Right. Let's see, Celt's going to open a spade. I believe so. I mean, it's Just not the prettiest 12 count. I mean, I think spade, two hearts, double feels like a really normal start to the auction. Yeah. And then as South... South probably bids just two spades mm -hmm. because their hands kind of control poor. So it may go a spade, two hearts, double, redouble with the doubles and heart on them too. Sure. Let South bid two spades freely, being more assuring about the sixth spade to North. Uh, so anytime you like say like, oh, it's free to just sort of redouble to show the doubles on honor, it's actually not quite because it gives you know South the option to both pass and bid two spades, whereas before with they did two spades there, they might have just had been a sort of least of evils action. Yep. I agree with all that. But South has not opened yet. I think if he hasn't opened yet, it's probably because they're discussing something or someone's out smoking or taking a bathroom break rather than the fact that he doesn't think he's not sure if this hand's an opening to. How how confused would you be if he thinks this hand is a pass and the previous hand that you weren't sure of was an opening bid? If he passes this hand, I'm going to... I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to be... One of the things I'm going to do is be surprised. Again. <laughs> Again, yes. That sums it up pretty well. I think they did well to stop at the other table. Yeah, they kind of had the auction that you had mentioned, a spade, two hard overcall, negative double by north, east passed, south bid two spades, and north decided, my hand's mostly just gotten worse the longer this auction's gone on. <laughs> I have shortness and partner spade length, the queen double ten of hearts is a bad card, we have a misfit. Uh, it doesn't look like three no trump is going to be a great place to play. Four spades might have no play. Five of a minor is pretty far off. Let's try and get out for a plus score. And he was right. North doesn't even know that spades is a is more than a six card fit because partner might have just been stuck over two hearts double, or, you know, like three hearts, three small hearts, not wanting to bid two no trump, and, and uh, yeah, and not wanting to bid you know bid three diamonds on you know queen third or something. Right. And like King, Queen Jack, fifth, three small, Queen third, uh, Ace and one, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be two spades. Well, I, I'm sure you're right. Players are definitely on break or something right now. It would make sense. They're halfway through the set. And sometimes players just like, I've seen players schedule breaks <laughs> ahead of time and just say, look, after this board, we are always taking a break, which I, I think is totally fair. It feels a little bit weird to me if I'm sitting at the table and I get a good result on the 10th board out of 15 in the set. And then my opponents say, hey, let's take a break. You know, that... <laughs> <laughs> well, he does open two spades when he comes back to sit down at the table. So are they playing? <laughs> what is their two spade opening bit? It could be intermediate. I think that would be. Yeah, a, I, uh, so I do, especially in multi partnerships. I kind of like an opening two of the major to show, uh, 
hands that include minimum hands with six spades that other people are opening one. So like sort of like a nine to 12, they're, they're playing an eight to 11, it looks like. But yeah, eight, eight to 11, 11 I've been told. Solid. So it looks like they include some 12s in there, eight to 11. This is kind of looks like an 11. I agree. Well, it certainly put it in perspective that they weren't making four spades. They, they also are defending three hearts, which they're not going to. Well, I guess if North Pit switches to a low diamond, then they can take five tricks. Yeah, and yeah. that brings up an interesting question on trick one, where what should South signal be at trick one? I guess two preference. If North switches the Ace of Diamonds, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. He'll get a congratulatory king on that. Yep. And now there's going to be no question. I mean, North just has to hope that his partner's queen of diamonds is cashing. And there it is. King of spades and a high spade return, asking for a diamond rough, which is not going to work out, but a good attempt. And if partner had one more heart, we might have. Yeah. The player didn't need to have seven hearts. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So with three hearts going down one, this does end up being close to a push board. One imp going the way of McAllister, their first imps of the second. They're on the board. <laughs> Took them a while to get on the board last set too, right? Uh yeah, I think I think you're probably Right about that? It's been a while. <laughs> um, I do not remember what happened 10 minutes ago, so <laughs> you're going to have to bear with me. But but yeah, they're showing some signs of life. There's claiming down. Yep. So they've now got seven boards. They're gonna to need to make up 17 imps. Very doable. I mean, one vulnerable game swing and they would be right back in it. That's a nice hand. <laughs> that is a very nice hand in the north seat. Uh, so it doesn't look like this is gonna be the vulnerable game swing they get back. It's a little scary though, three no trump is a contract, right? If clubs happen to be 5-3, Declare would be in some real trouble or real danger of going down. That's the power of aces. Yeah, it's like <laughs> too many high card points to count. 5, 10, 15, and 8. <laughs> and none. 15 and none. Yeah, it sounds points. like 24 to me. So North Looks like gets... they play two diamonds as some sort of extra strong opener. Yeah, two diamonds, two hearts, two no. Uh, I'm guessing 22 to 24. Oh, never mind. Someone has told me it's 24 to 26. Well, that explains why for sure Brooklyn is doing something over it. Right. The uh, more high card points you have, the more likely your hand is to be four triple three. It starts becoming very hard to uh, not be four triple three at a certain point. For example, if you have thirty seven, you're very likely to be four triple three because it's the only way to get there. You sort of, oftentimes you can see things like that by going to the all the way to the extreme. There's a hundred percent chance at a certain point, so it's probably going up. Uh, the more high card points you have, the more likely you are to be balanced. Mm. Yeah, I've got a little bit more information on the two diamond opener. Apparently it is some sort of multi, um, but it's either multi or essentially a game forcing hand of various types. I mean, a strong option in their multi still. 
It's like they're stuck in 1974. Is it really that old? I mean, still no American partnerships have adopted to playing multi. It, I believe multi was an American uh, invention, which is weird because normally with the ACBL, if it was invented in America, they're good with us doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I believe it was an American invention and uh, it just was got barred early on. But I, I, I do think it actually does date back pretty far. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly how far I could, I mean, I just made up 1974, so that, that number was really random. But you said it very confidently. I believed you. <laughs> that, that, is the, that is the benefit of confidently saying stuff that you might be lying about. I agree. Well, the Nine of Hearts was an interesting opening lead. Uh, Declare might not exactly know what's going on in the heart suit, but he does go about knocking out the Ace of Diamonds. He will have an, a late round diamond entry to South's hand if he wants to try, for example, Spade Finesse later in the play. Partner 654 Deuce of Diamonds was good for an entry? Yes, it was. All of the um, English spectators are telling me that multi was invented in England by Terence Reese. I think they're wrong about that. But... <laughs> if I cash the second high spade, that doesn't seem very likely. I also think that, this is that's pretty not the king of unlikely. That's the king of <clears throat> yeah, but this. I think this hand kind of illustrates this concept that aces are really strong cards if utilized properly on defense. Um, Declare wants to be able to force out the ace of diamonds, the ace of clubs, the ace of hearts, and currently he's been able to do so with one of the honors, the, the ace of diamonds. But if East-West just start ducking tricks and clubs and ducking tricks and hearts, Declare might run into a situation where he ends up with five losers before he gets nine winners. He might not know which ace to go knock out, yeah. too. You know, depending on like which one is going to set up a trick for them and which one's not. Yeah, exactly. The defense didn't know to attack clubs here, but it's situations like this you know, where you're missing aces. You could easily, you know, have an even stronger hand like that. You make the spades ace king, queen jack. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, and then you have king, queen, jack, king, queen, jack, king, queen, jack. They lead a suit. You win. You knock out an ace. They knock out your last stopper. And, you know, you could take your four tricks for the ace and queen, jack. The two tricks they, they knocked out. The two tricks you established. That's just eight. And you can take five. So, you know, you can have uh, 28 high card points in your hand and, uh, you know, seemingly have 10 tricks, but you only take eight. Right. Well, West spade switch kind of backfired. East was, I guess, a little bit more hopeful that West had some extra high cards there somewhere in his hand and tried to set up the spade suit to no avail. So Declare will end up with an over trick here, one up going back the way of Rosenthal. So Declare will win this, play the king of diamonds on the table and claim. Yeah. So the lead's back to 18. We got six boards to play. Still just we in search of that big one game. Swings yet. The biggest we've seen was six and a five, and then like a whole lot of nothing. Right, yeah, it was just those couple of part score swings at the beginning of the set. And you go into a set down a little bit. You probably don't mind the set being you know, not being super swingy, but you want it to be a little swingy. <laughs> they had their chance on board 21. That one no trump doubled. I mean, could have been a much needed seven up swing going their way if they were able to beat it a couple tricks. Yeah. North has passed a very bad 
four triple three eleven count. I think we'll respond two no to one club rather than one spade. <laughs> we have, I think, the first violation of Burns' yeah. law, um, with the result in the other room. At least first violation that I've seen or been keyed in on. I don't understand the north south auction in the other room. One spade must have denied spades or something. And even then, maybe if one spade denied spades, two clubs are supposed to be choice of minors. Hmm. I guess I guess that's technically like North forgot and did one spade saying I don't have spades, and then suddenly the two clubs saying pick a minor, and North still forgot that one that it wasn't a national auction. Mm -hmm. but even then, I would think you would raise to three clubs and go down there. That's true. Or bid two now. And if my partner opened the bidding and then rebid, and I have the North hand, I'm bidding again. Yeah, maybe it's another Vugraf error. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm less convinced that two clubs in the south was the result from the other table. Here we reach a much more respectable one no trump contract with uh what's this, twenty-five combined highs? Twenty five two four triple three hands, twenty-five highs. Not terrible spots north south. We've got two of the tens and the nine of spades working in the long spade hand. If we want to talk about a your typical frozen suit, the club suit is the perfect example here. It's not only just frozen from one round of play, but um, it's frozen from multiple rounds of play with that nine of clubs in East Sand. Diamond suit too is frozen. Yep. That tells me that Declare may be playing on spades. So we're probably best off cashing three rounds of hearts before playing on spades to just make make sure the defense doesn't have hearts to play. It wouldn't shock me to just see a spade towards the queen a trick too. Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense in one no trump. You don't need much to go right to be able to make this contract. Now... Now they've made it easy to bring in the spade suit. Well, note also that the heart suit is brought in with another heart play because it declares heart spots, showing off the power of good spot cards. So what's declared didn't unblock the queen of hearts before playing a spade to the queen? I am a little as well. See, so Declare has two tricks in, has two hearts for four, two spades for six, two diamonds for eight, and a club for nine, and I think he's going to get a trick on the wash. Because he'll throw the opponents in in one of the minors, and then they're going to have to blow up a trick, blow up a suit. I mean, they'll blow, have to blow a trick in the other minor. Mm -hmm. so that, that depends on what gets pitched on the long spade and the, and the long heart, too. Right. Maybe everyone's getting squeezed. <laughs> it is. It, this would be a much more entertaining hand in like a board of match or match point context, or or if Declare happened to be in game. Um, <laughs> one no trump with twenty five combined high card points and stoppers everywhere often does not result in a great team event. Board. So the other room, I just got a result through for board twenty seven and no result for board twenty six. So I'm not sure what's happening there with the uh, we've been having issues with you know unreliable results coming through on the view graph the entire match. So whatever yeah. results we're seeing here are not official, I think. Yeah, that's correct. I, I do have a pretty strong belief that most of the, all of the scores from the first nine boards of this set up through 24 are correct. So there are a number of upsets in the offing with a quarter to go. Uh, number 28, Zhang, is up six against Wolf, number five, Wolfson. Mm -hmm. 
at the end of three quarters. Uh, number original number thirty seven Dyson is two ahead of uh, Larry Leibowitz. Yep. Uh, not much of an upset for Bob Hammond to be ahead, but they are a lower seed. Yep. Uh, number nine seed, they're ahead by a bit. Um, Patty Kane is uh, well ahead of number eleven Milner, so, and number twenty Rombo, another underseeded team with uh, two Rombos and. Well, and Aachen is almost a hundred ahead of Gavin Wolpert's squad. They, I, I don't know how much of a spoiler I'm supposed to give, but that match is over now. Rumbo so, has is the first team into the round of sixteen for tomorrow, and I do think you're right. They were very underrated, four-handed. Leo and Jerome Rombeau from France, a very, very strong partnership. Uh, two brothers, I believe. And then Sabina Aachen and Roy Welland, very strong partnership from Germany. What we, uh, the bulletin said basically that the first round of the Vanderbilt really went to form, um, and that was true. Second round of the Vanderbilt, we may see a very large number of upsets. In fact, even this match is still within range of an upset, uh, with it being 20 amps. Although it's it's winding down to the point that uh, that's going to be hard to happen. We don't know if this board was even played in the other room because the results deleted. Got it. Yeah, apologies if the Rombos are father son. I think people are telling me that. Um, so. I have not personally played against them. I think by the time the younger one started playing, I had already stopped playing myself in competitive tournaments. And if you're in a team that was doing an upset, and I forgot to mention you, my apologies. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to all the winners. <laughs> You know, we'll see some of these results, and um, losing a match by 100 never feels great, but just making it to the round of 32 of an event of this caliber is already a very impressive accomplishment. Uh, I know a lot of these players might not think so, um, but Nickel, for example, I heard got knocked out in the round of 64 in one of these recent events, and currently they're the one seed in the bracket for the Vanderbilt today. So this okay. looks like they're having <laughs> easier time of it today. <laughs> this is a lead. <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on. I, I know we've been talking a little bit about the scores. There, there was a fairly interesting hand in front of us and things got much more interesting with this two of spades lead. Yeah, if Declare wants to repeat the spade finesse, thinking seven spades and three aces, which is very tempting, they basically blow a trick because they could have an entry to the jack of spades to get to the king of hearts on this particular lie of the cards. Mm -hmm. Now, you might not play it that way. And let's say they led a heart, you might win the ace of hearts and leave the queen of spades out of your hand at trick two, trying to force an opponent with a doubleton king to either let you have seven spade tricks or an entry to cash the king of hearts. So it may, it's an interesting lead. Yeah. Yeah, Declare has a, a Declare basically can force a second trump lead, but let's say Declare plays low from dummy and it doesn't go king and he can just cash the ace of hearts and play ace of diamonds and a diamond and the opponents either have to let him get there with the diamond rough or they have to play a second trump for him. Mm -hmm. So I think low is actually the play because yeah. Clara could force a second trump lead anyways. Yeah, and he's done very well here. So gets to unblock the hard ace. And I assume the safest thing to do is just play a spade to the jack and cash the king of hearts. Yeah, get um, your club loser away and then see if the king queen of diamonds are on side. It probably doesn't hurt to go Ace of Diamonds, Diamond, or what he's doing now, ducking a diamond. It's hard to imagine what you're losing to by attempting yeah, that. Actually, if West pops the King of Diamonds to play second trump, 
then Declare can actually win the Trump and Dami, cash the King of Hearts, and take a club finesse. But if West ducks the Diamond, East doesn't have a Trump to play. Yeah. Declare can rough a Diamond and Dami. Yeah, the, this is a really nice kind of like match point line of play to um, to score so the over. There's a lot of tricks. Mm hmm. Declare's got two more. Is that 12 tricks for Declare? I guess it's 11 tricks for Declare? No, 12, 12 tricks for Declare. It seems 12 like tricks. 12. Club goes away on the King of Hearts, and Declare only loses one diamond. We'll never know what happened in the other room, ever. It'll, it'll be a secret for in perpetuity. <laughs> That's but, uh, true. Well this is the board here, that we don't have a comparison for. Oh, that's disappointing. So here it is, King of Hearts pitching a club. And Clara probably does take the diamond finesse for lack of anything better to do. Some of these great lines of play, unfortunately, uh, just are never going to go down in the history books as such because it was for the second over trick in a game contract. Four boards to go. My suspicion is that that's. Uh an amp or two to, uh, you know, may, maybe the board was taken by the director because of some irregularity or something. Mm -hmm. We'll just assume the score is the same and it's 21 amps. Yep. Four to go. Yeah, the, the lead is not insurmountable still. I mean, I guess Rosenthal could still lose by about 70 if, um, <laughs> if they have some really bad results, but... <laughs> They're going to need to, uh, well, McAllister's going to need to get a couple of big game swings in, and this does not look like the board to do it. So so East could back in with a double of um, two spades here uh, and get their side to something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not super attractive to do that in most circumstances, but maybe East feels like he needs to be active in this position, sure. in this state of the match. Let's say he's an active player by nature, but he, he didn't feel it the need to do so this time. Yeah. So he lets it go. North South get to the same two spade contract from the other room. And not great spot cards this time. Two spades looks like it drifted off, but it's doesn't look like it necessarily should it doesn't look like it will always go down. There's some play to this contract. The declare has a club pitch on the second heart, and the club ace is on side, and clubs are breaking. There's there's a lot of things that can go right for declare. It does seem that 140 might be a more likely result than a than minus 50, but I'm not sure what went wrong. But minus 50 feels like declare didn't take very many tracks. Yeah, this diamond lead is going to help a little bit. Because now Declara knows the diamond position when that queen of diamonds gets covered by the king. Well, I, I just looked back through the play in the other room and Declara, uh, Declara got took a line that was not obvious and guessed everything wrong. <laughs> that does tend to happen sometimes if... Uh... If you end up going down a few tricks in contracts that otherwise should be making. Ooh, I, I am getting some table talk from players who are watching in the other room. They're saying that on board 29, the board came with a hand face up. So we might get a new board 29. 29 or 26? 29. Uh, I don't know what's happened with 26. 
sixes and nines can kind of look similar. So how, how do you play? we play this hand after a queen of diamonds, king, ace? Well, it's not that dangerous if a diamond rough happens. It's coming at the cost of a natural diamond trick, so I wouldn't be that concerned. I feel like I would just play back a diamond to trick two. Just play a diamond to the jack in the third round of diamonds and try to set up a rough in my hand. I don't think we need to do that. We know the ten of diamonds is on side. So it feels pretty natural to me to just start pulling trumps. There's nothing well, the well, opponents I'd, can I'd do. I'd rather them play trumps than me. <laughs> well, that that's true too, but they won't. You could play ace hearts, king of hearts, heart rough, and then be in dummy to play a club. Yeah, I, I like a trump. I, I don't know if he's going to play low to the nine or low to the jack. Probably low to the nine. Is the is... first piece in going down in the other table. Hmm. Low to the nine is spectacularly unsuccessful. And, and if I'm playing trump yourself with this suit combination, obviously you'd rather lead towards the shorter honor first, which is just a general principle sort of thing. It's like you lead to your shorter honors, and here, like, the person with king... Oh! Well, the ace of spades is a really unspectacular um, second-hand high. And I think that ends any chances the defense had by crashing the ten of spades. I think Brooklyn probably would have put in the nine of spades. Yep. So they still... I, he's hoping to promote... That seven's not... I guess the seven could promote. I don't think it does. Uh, definitely won't. Claire, what's Claire going to do here? He's no... Just Jack of Diamonds Diamond feels pretty normal to me. I'm certain after seeing that Ten of Spades fall that Declare knows what's going on in the Spade suit. Because now if we can rough a diamond with the Spade Queen, we're in great shape. Right. And with the Spades being blocked, it, it might be a little bit challenging for the defenders to pull two more rounds of trumps. Like, East should definitely cash the King of Spades, but that might not necessarily be an obvious play. From his perspective, maybe he thinks partner really wants this fourth round of diamonds through. Because West has been defending, like, please, partner, give me diamond roughs. I mean, if East played the King of Spades in a low club, then there'd be some potential for, I guess, West to win the Queen of Clubs and play a, another spade. Yep. Which would not be good enough to beat the contract at this point. I mean, Declare has already established his eight tricks. Three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, eight tricks. But yeah, so McAllister, understandably, kind of mispicking the position here. That you always know someone's doing the wrong thing. If both Declare and Defenders are playing the same suit, then one of them is wrong. <laughs> And in this case, it was the defense. So now I'm sure Broglin just caches the Ace-King of Hearts shedding a club, doesn't want to risk any foolishness happening, and he'll lead a spade up. And eventually a club to the king. Yeah, it looks like 140 to me. So you said at the beginning, you said it looks more like 140 than minus 50. <laughs> it's like your x-ray vision. Right. So four more imps going into the pocket of Rosenthal. They're going to be happy with that with three boards to play. Hey, with the undoes. 
Uh oh. No, the play made sense. Just <laughs> go with it. <laughs> Okay, we, we do get the claim of 140. Right, that's the result we thought. Yeah, so yeah, two boards have been pulled in the other yeah. room, is what I've heard. Boards 29 and 30. So this might be the last board we get to see today, unfortunately. So in the other room, they stopped in all of one no trump. West is opened. Maybe uh, West has not felt the set has been going so great, or maybe that's just a normal opening bid for them. But he, and then of course, he responded. Hey, he he grew up in New Zealand playing bridge. That is like a king heavy for an opening bid over there. <laughs> So th this is why people have moved away from the sandwich no trump and into the natural no trump in this position because otherwise you get stolen blind here and your partner now actually should just about bid game. Mm -hmm. Now is game. So you don't pick off the king of hearts, which you really know enough to pick off the king of hearts by the time it comes to it. Let's say if West leads a club and it goes small king. <laughs> starts becoming a little more likely that the heart king's the other place. Well, I mean, in addition to that point, if the king of hearts is on side, you still only have three heart tricks. So really the only that's way to true. take four yeah. is to pick stiff king off side. Yeah, that's that's a really great point. And, and it's, I think it's something that people often miss is you know a, fin a likely finesse that doesn't actually help you when it wins mm -hmm. it's recognizing that at the table can be tricky definitely and you can get into your head that people will have an honor in a suit when they bid it um if you're not careful so this one heart bid declare looks at it there's only the king of hearts missing now, obviously we all would bid a heart with four small on east sand but Sometimes it's harder to see that if you're not looking at the cards. I think you're right. For me, the decision here would be between inviting game and bidding game. Yeah, I, I think you're right. North is considering just bidding three now. And uh, opposite just a, a normal 15 to 17 no trump opener, North would definitely probably go through stamen and invite with his eight count. But these no trump overcalls, um, not only tend to be a little bit heavier than your normal 15 to 17 range, there it is, there's three now from north, but additionally, the opponents have given you so much information about where all the missing cards lie, you can basically play yeah. the hand double dummy. And I'll also note how juicy those spots are in the north hand, that 10 nine of hearts, the nine eight of clubs, nine of diamonds, mm -hmm. um, all of those super valuable cards uh, in your evaluation, and they're gonna, they, every one of them is a trick in the play too. This on the actual deal, right? They're, they're all valuable. Like, Declare could easily be playing hearts low to the nine to start with. Mm -hmm. Well, a dime is low to the nine, I mean, and, and here they've let a diamond, so it's just gonna play the nine. Yeah, so nine of diamonds will take the first trick. Um, West, of course, figuring let's try my five card suit and hope that it works out. And then what does Declare do? I think my if I after the nine diamonds holds, I think I'm continuing the jack of diamonds and letting and seeing if that holds also. If the jack of diamonds also holds, then I have to figure out what I'm gonna do. So if diamonds are five one, continuing the jack of diamonds only sets up one extra trick. That that was the end of my side. I <laughs> I didn't have a follow-up to that. Um. <laughs> and it, it, I mean, you could definitely set up at least one trick in clubs. Mm -hmm. And with the opening bit on your left, you kind of would like to start clubs with the queen from your hand, even though right. you can see that's not particularly successful on this lie of the cards. Yeah. Do 
do think that I would play a little faster from diamond because I want to see what happens on the nine of diamonds. Mm -hmm. Since trick, the, the result of trick one is actually important for planning the play. Yep. I think as declarer, I may play a little faster with the nine of diamonds. Like I'll still think like my time, but I want to see if the nine of diamonds is holding, and then and then think again after that. Well, I, I believe he knows from the rule of oh, how many is this? Eleven. Yeah. Um, Eleven. That the nine of diamonds holds. Okay. Yeah. Good point. But it's true that the six of diamonds could be from a six card suit, for one thing. And... But if you're convinced that the king of clubs is on your left, mm -hmm. you can always just start clubs by playing low to the ten, mm -hmm. figuring you have a club finesse in your pocket for later, but you don't have a sure entry to the dummy, or at least a sure quick entry. You do have a sure entry, but it's not a quick entry right. in the heart suit. You don't, uh, it actually turns out it is a quick entry, but you just don't know it's a quick entry. Yeah, if, if we end up scoring three diamonds, three hearts, two clubs, and a spade, uh, all of which we can take, how many tricks is the defense getting on this? That they'll score the king of diamonds, they'll probably get a club trick in the process, um, they'll get a heart trick, and they might get two spades. I guess that's the danger. Okay, De Declare has decided to take a heart finesse. I think he was just maybe trying to establish communications between the hands with that play. Mm -hmm. Figuring, like, either the heart finesse wins and now I know that it was winning, or the heart finesse loses and I have entries to both hands. Yep. Yeah, a reasonable thing to do. But what does West do now? Because West is kind of sad. West really doesn't want to be on the lead. Yeah, I mean, West can, to some extent, safely exit the King of Diamonds. It, it kind of, it, it doesn't give up a trick per se. It just gives up tempo. Um, Declare would have had to knock out that card to set up two diamond tricks. And similarly, West could exit a, a low diamond if he wanted to mm -hmm. try to. But, and either way, he might be subject to end playing the diamond suit later. Yeah. And where he wanted Declare to be. Right. Does he want Declare in hand or in dummy? Mm -hmm. I think you want Declare in hand because you're looking at nothing useful in the black suits. So you know every finesse is going to work if Declare takes it from dummy. This is not going to paralyze Declare with fear. No, but this might have been a good attempt if, if East happened to have that spade 10. Then they could like, establish... If East had the spade king, he could duck this mm -hmm. and set up the long spade. Yeah, that as well. So it looks like a good defensive attempt from Matt Brown over there, but it is not going to pay off this time. Declared now has two spades and three hearts is five. A club and a diamond is seven, and a second diamond, so one trick one is eight. And you just set up a diamond now yep. for his ninth trick. Yeah. It's a sure thing rather than guessing who has what in clubs. So Declare could just win the spade and play a low diamond towards the jack and has nine tricks for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why Declare is thinking so much at this point in the hand since he's made the contract at this point. All the hard work has been done. That's true. Mostly on the defense's end. Um, I know that if East had the King of Spades instead of the Queen, I, I think this defense would have actually beaten the contract. Yeah. Yeah, the I defense agree. would take three spades, and the King of Hearts is four, and then either the King of Diamonds or the King of Clubs for the fifth track. Mm-hmm. So good attempt, but this is, it's not exactly out of reach, but it is looking as if uh, Rosenthal might be moving on to the round of 16. Yeah, well, the game swing going um, to Rosenthal on this board, uh, 
and 29 and 30 potentially not even existing. I like their chances. Yeah, and that board 26, it's going to be hard to beat 680 on the north-south cards. So... I thought we might have been having like a bit of an operator glitch, and that's why there wasn't any play. Brogland apparently does finally call for a card from Dummy. I wonder if Brogland was considering whether or not he should be what line of play is safest to try for a second over uh, to try for an overtrack. Mm -hmm. I would think it's sort of mandatory right now to set up your ninth trick by playing a diamond, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I agree. <laughs> Is it possible that he's miscounted something, or...? Yeah, it's so late in the day. <laughs> I've seen a lot of miscounting in my time from uh, players of all levels. Because that could be an explanation. I mean, I've definitely seen that be the cause, and maybe that's the most likely cause for kind of slow play in a contract that otherwise looks like there's nothing to it um, on VooGraph tables. I, I want to say, it came off a, uh, a flight straight to the tournament, um, rushed in, play the first match, and then got stuck in a relay auction to 5 no Trump where I proceeded to miscount my tricks and think I needed a finesse to make it. Mm -hmm. Take the finesse in the end position, thinking it was losing, but I needed it. Mm -hmm. It won, and I made an overture. And you won by one. No. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this was, it was against Wafik, and uh, <laughs> Wafik was like pretty mad when he saw what had happened. He didn't get his, get his great plus score for me doing something incredibly stupid. But, so yeah, miscounting tricks uh, is part of life at Bridge. Being in a, and similarly, like having your head in the game and being in the right mind space is just absolutely critical to uh, to performing well. Mm -hmm. Got to take care of your brain, or your brain will be the first one to betray you when it when it comes down to it. <laughs> yeah, there's no way he's like he, he hasn't miscounted his tricks. It's taking this long in his hand. Either that or the operators out for a smoke. <laughs> well, it would be a weird time given uh, that he He's just actually... played a trick. I mean, I guess he hasn't really tangled things because he still has a late entry with the King of Spades. Yeah. Maybe he's just showing off now. <laughs> he's he's worked out that he has some sort of fancy squeeze for a tenth trick, and. <laughs> He's going to run the hearts, and he'll demonstrate. So the, the other room, the auction, also started a diamond pass, a heart, and no trump. Um, and North didn't move over it. And that's I find that to be mildly shocking, vulnerable at imps to have partner bidding one known in a sandwich position. And you holding, you know, it feels like bean counting to say I have only eight, not even invite game on hand where Baki's judgment was to bid game himself. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, we kind of talked it through. Okay, he caches the Ace of Hearts and now exits a diamond um, to set up his diamond trick. But um, we definitely talked through why North decided to bid 3-0 no at this table. Maybe it's possible that in the other room, Steve Rain knew that they needed a swing and figured that his best chance to generate a swing was to actually go low on the hand and pass a no trump. That could be the reason for it. Going low is definitely a way you can generate swings, uh, and and I wouldn't have picked that moment to do it. it it's, it's certainly a legitimate tactic to, and it's sort of easier to generate swings by going low because you know the other team's just going to be bidding everything in sight. Mm -hmm. You will. Yep. So, you know, it's it often is uh, a better way to, to generate a swing by going low than by going high. I mean, like pushing for really questionable slams is just a way to lose the match by to, to put the match out of reach for your side. 
find other ways to generate swings rather than try to bid like a 20% slam or something. Sure. Well, the other table, North-South, managed to make their way all the way up to one diamond. <laughs> and probably in one bid. They did. They did it that. So Brogland here, uh, we saw this in the previous set, actually, or maybe in the second quarter, where I think Rain was the one who ended up opening an 18 to 19 count. His partner wasn't able to respond. Both opponents took a bid, and he stuck in one no trump and got severely punished for it. Here, Brogland does the same thing with his 19. But neither East or West was brave enough to venture a double. I, I don't even know if it's going down, but... That... I think you kind of have to bid one no trump there. You're, I mean, you have almost half the deck in your hand. Mm -hmm. It is 19. It's a pretty nice hand as South. Hurt opening lead is not going to cause too many problems immediately. If he picks up the spade suit, he'll make this. And there's every indication that the spades are 4 2 after a club double. Yeah. In fact, he's getting count from the opponents on spades of this trick, and they both gave him upside down count. So, th this is a good little trick here to lead the queen, pretending you're trying to generate an, an entry to the dummy, mm -hmm. and then each opponent think they think their partner has the ace, and so they give you count. So that's a that's a really good trick to have in your in your arsenal. Yeah, it's possible that East West might be giving Smith that trick too, um, but. You're absolutely right that if South had led the Ace of Spades, both opponents would know what's going on, and they would just play their lowest card, and it wouldn't be a signal of any sort. But the Queen of Spades could easily influence one of the players, especially East, who knows that his partner might have the Spade Ace, to give true count, because he might want to deny an entry to the dummy. That that trick of the queen from Ace Queen Small and it uh, was taught to me very late in life by Jeff Goldsmith. Um, it was a hand where I had a choice in a three zero of whether to play for a three three break or a finesse, and uh, of course I favored the finesse. But Goldsmith pointed out to me afterwards if I just led the queen, they would have given me honest count, and then I would have known to play for the three three break. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like since I didn't know it intuitively after having played bridge for 30 plus years that uh, it may just be something someone has to tell you unless you're like really gifted to just know that, know that trick. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I hear that. Well, West ends up switching to a diamond partner's king who wants to make it very clear that hearts is a source of tricks, returns maybe the improper count card of the two of hearts. Um, so the heart suit is now blocked, which... If they both gave fake count here, then he declares prepared to congratulate them on their fine defense. But... <laughs> Broglin does take the spade hook and ends up making a no trump. Even get, getting out for down one would have been a nice swing to Rosenthal. So. Actually, if, if West keeps his jack of hearts, uh, he's going to get end played with it. Well, uh, West has to keep sure. the jack of hearts because he can't do anything else. Oh, right, yeah, so hard exit here, Declare, is going to take another trick. Yep. He has to decide what to, whether to exit with hearts or clubs. And he got it right. Yeah, he absolutely knew the heart position when West got in with the uh, um, Ace of Clubs and did not continue hearts at trick four. So that means, 
I'm pretty sure at this point we can declare the match winner. Well, the, the results actually are in. So we happen to know because this is 30, boards, or 30 minutes in the past. Congratulations to Rosenthal, who survived a very close match. I mean, for th three quarters, McAllister hung in there. But in this fourth segment of play, they kind yeah, of took over. Yeah, it doesn't work close just looking at the scoreboard for the entire match. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was nip and tuck through uh, 45 boards. Right. And then they just, looks like they had a, just a blistering fourth quarter where they gave up one hit. Yeah, one board to play. And this will be the victory lap for Bach and Broglin at this table. I mean, it's almost needless to say, but they, they always impress whenever I've been uh, watching their matches. Broglin and Bakke seem to do a lot of stuff right and very little wrong. Last word is said, and then play will resume tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Eastern time US uh, with the round of 16. So thank you, Michael, for yeah. joining me. Well, thank you, Brady. You're, uh, it's, uh, you do a fantastic job here of, uh, on the commentary. I really appreciate uh, uh, you directing it. They should hire you full time for this. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> I already got a vote. <laughs> Someone hire me full time. <clears throat> The eight seven of hearts are squishable here, huh? <laughs> See, yeah, this this is a monstrously disastrous lead for for West. Um, Declare might be able to take four heart tricks using the clubs as an entry. It might be a little challenging if East West do get diamonds on the table fast enough. Declare is in the five one fit. What is this called? The Super Moisian? The Violation of Burns Law? Usually the Micro Moisian and the Mini Moisian are 4-2 are and 3-3 three, three fits. I'm not sure which is which. I can never remember them. 5-1 uh, fits are just sometimes like the best you can do. <laughs> uh, East runs out of diamonds at some point and West runs out of entries. So I think Declare is always going to be kind of okay. Declare might just play ace of spades, king of spades, spade. He's pretty sure. He might play a club. I'm not sure what he's going to do. He'll try to play one round of clubs first and four will try not go after spades. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And West giving count here. I mean, East doesn't know a lot about the hand. It is a little bit challenging to duck the ace of clubs in this spot but that might make Declare's life a little bit more difficult. It must be nice to get all these reliable count signals when you need them. <laughs> Your opponents are not this reliable in on defense? Some of them are. Not all of them. Yeah, so... I really should play for more count signals from the opponents. Uh, McAllister does think about it for a while, but eventually judges that it's just... He would feel terrible if clubs were 5-1 and ended up playing low. Switches to the Ace of Diamonds. What does Declare do on the second round of diamonds? It's certainly reasonable to pitch, just to make sure you keep control of the hand. I think you, I pitch, figuring, like, I don't know that those hearts are actually winners instead of losers. I suspect Declare is going to rough, 
and I think he's then going to use two more club entries to rough two more diamonds in his hand. Uh, the opponents gave him the count signal, right? <laughs> he's got to right, know so clubs are 3-3. Three, three. So that would be the ace-king of spades. You have five spades in hand, and two clubs and dummies already seven. You've scored a heart already is eight. Mm -hmm. You score another heart is nine. It's a lot of tricks. It is quite a few tricks. Almost starting to feel like you're underbid. <laughs> well, the South did have a pretty good hand, um, all things considered. It was 13 with a small singleton and a bunch of aces and kings. Yeah, North might have been one no Trump over one spade with his eight, misfitting eight, I guess. So I just let it go. He felt like this 10 of spades was going to be enough of a pusher to make one spade not awful, which guess that's true. Yeah. They did get to one no in the other room. Well, now we'll see if he pitches a heart or roughs it. I think your line of roughing is better. As long as you believe the club signal, I'm pretty comfortable with uh, roughing this trick. Yeah, I mean, roughing this trick is like drawing trumps is for suckers. I'm just going to score my little ones without it. Mm -hmm. So that, and I think that's the right play when you're just sort of scrambling. It's the right idea. And the player could try the Ace of Hearts before going about trying to do this cross roughing thing. Yeah, it would be a little bit sad if um, West roughed the Ace of Hearts, but. You might not be able to do anything productive after doing so. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Even one round of trumps getting pulled, you just win the Ace and continue your plan. Crossing clubs, rough diamonds. <laughs> Brogland really grinding it out. He he is, I, I guess, has a bit of a reputation as a grinder in some of these team events, and that's what it takes to win at these high-level competitions. You know, these 5 4 three, one hands are meant for suit play, and this 5-1 uh, spade fit is going to play a fair bit better than 1-0 Trump. Mm -hmm. That's kind of pretty interesting. Yeah, it's a little surprising in the other room that South didn't um, complete his description. The partner bid a no trump. He could have rebid two hearts to show both majors. And I, I don't know if four hearts was going to make, but I think they would have ended up there. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'd have passed one no with the South hand. I would just treat it like I opened a spade partner bit of no trump. It wouldn't even occur to me to not bid two hearts. Again, maybe just getting a little bit too creative trying to swing. I mean, they know that they've been having a bad set over there, and sometimes those things can compound, right? The, the match was very close for three quarters, and then a couple of bad boards happened, and the McAllister team... Kind of tried to make it up or something. Yeah, I mean, you really never know what's happening in the other room, so mm -hmm. I, I try. I tend to be very cautious about trying to, um, you know, assume what the what the state of the match is, and then do something weird to try to make it up. It's if if you blow the match doing that, it feels much worse, and you're not likely to. It's never worked for me to win a match by doing that, so maybe that <laughs> sort of colors my feeling like. Like, I don't want to lose the match. It's never worked for me to win it that way. Mm -hmm. Maybe other people have different experiences with their swinging. And maybe my general style of play is swinging enough to begin with. <laughs> the things I think are normal are actually swing actions anyways. Like not opening 11 counts <laughs> with two aces? Yeah, that turns out that's like super swingy nowadays. Like five, four, three, one, 11 count with a stiff queen of spades, you know, pass. <laughs> Everyone else opened it. <laughs> no, you're, you're right. He, he does pitch a heart. 
I mean, maybe this is a little safer at the one level where he only needs seven tricks. Well, I mean, he must have judged it that way. I, I, uh, I mean, once you once you pointed out the line to me, I think it was totally clear to me to rough it. But he clearly considered both and decided this was better. Yeah, well, at least the hearts are coming out. Yeah. So heart continuation. Yeah, I guess it just bangs out the trumps in this position because everything else is a winner. Yeah. But I guess that could be bad, sad against. Well, he's kind of protected against bad spades because because the diamond queen's a winner. It looks like he's going to run the Ten of Spades here. He knows the King of yeah. Hearts is with East, so he's kind of protected against um, a heart rough. He's going to have to get to his hand somehow. The Ten of Clubs. I guess the Ten of Clubs, yeah. Can he coup East out of the... I guess I guess not, because West, West has the... West was a Trump. Well... <laughs> But he can't ever get rid of the Ace of Hearts. I mean, he can pitch the Ace of Hearts on the Queen of Diamonds. But whichever red suit he roughs in hand, the corresponding opponent can throw their club. So it's, it is close. We can almost score the rest of the tricks on a trump kill. Um, He needed to rough a diamond first. Yeah, so like, for example, he could pitch the ace of hearts here on the queen of diamonds and then play another diamond. But now, Let's say he roughed the seven of diamonds instead of playing the queen, crossed the jack of clubs, and then played the queen of diamonds. If East um, pitches, he pitches his... Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Ace of hearts and twos him. You're... If East roughs, he over roughs and claims. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He could have made 140 from that spot. Brogland. <laughs> he will be that scolded fierce. by his team captain. But yeah, he needed to rough the diamond first. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes if it takes you a little while to spot it, seeing all four hands, <laughs> then I guess it's fine. I guess he has a sure thing now by cashing the ace of spades and playing the ace of hearts. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brady. And uh, thanks, everyone. I will maybe make a set tomorrow, but I've got to fly to Louisville at some point. Thanks, Michael, for joining me. Always a pleasure to do some commentary with you. And uh, take care, everyone. We will see you all back here bright and early tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern. All right. Chat. I'm back for just a few minutes. There I am. Hello. How's everyone doing? How, how are you feeling? Uh, <laughs> who ended up losing all of their money? <laughs> Gandolius. Um, let's make sure we get the prediction in. So, McAllister won the match, right? <laughs> they're, they're the winners. <laughs> Well, this was fun. I kind of expected the match to look more like this from the get-go, but McAllister did hang in there for quite a while. I honestly don't know what went so wrong in this last set. It's not as if there were like a ton of game swings. It was just like somehow all of these small imp swings added up to 40 imps over the set. Um, but... Congrats to Rosenthal. So they will be moving on to the round of 16. Let's bring up the bridge winners scorecard and take a look at what's going on. So, oh, I can probably get rid of this and uh, this and also me, right? We want to get rid of me. There we go. Now we can see what's going on. So Nickel has advanced. Switzerland and Lean is still going. I mean, it was 34 imps after three sets, 
So Lane would have to make a pretty big comeback against the best team in the world. They might be able to. Um, Rosenthal comfortably moves through. Fleischer had a bit of a scare. I mean, they were up like 73 going into the last set, and they only picked up five while their opponents picked up 39, but ultimately they do win. Wolfson, the come from behind victory. 116, 109, they do take out Zhang. I think my bracket is still perfect currently. Actually, I'm not certain of that. Um, Street at 172. Ooh, Amoyles does take out Ash. That is a big scoring set, 155, 134. Leibowitz does make the comeback in the fourth quarter, 119 to 103 over Dyson. Kane has taken out Milner. Uh, one of the first upsets that we see. Rambo takes out Niedebach, which is, in case people are wondering, this was Gavin's team. Looks like Gavin might have been playing with... Um... I'm honestly not sure. Normally, Gavin plays with the sponsor of the team, so it probably that's probably what's going on. And Pepsi is playing with Christoph Burris. Um... They're a good partnership, but I'm not familiar with the other two players. I mean, I, I've seen the name Stamatov before. I have no idea who Juan Castillo is. But that was a big match for the French team, French slash -ger German squad. No other scores in. Yeah, everyone's wondering about the Aussie matchup, Hans against Milne. And Milne fought back in the third set, but I feel like Hans is just such a strong team, they're going to be able to close that out. Hammond potentially could have an upset here over Bernal. Hoskins might have an upset over Juster. Goodman and Hill would absolutely destroy my bracket if it stands like this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have Hill in the finals. I might have them winning, so that would be a disaster for me. Let me get a quick refresh on the scoreboard, see if anything has changed. Oh, well, we do have the Aussie matchup in. Hans has taken it, 118 to 94. You didn't have to travel all the way to the US to play against your countrymen. I'm just saying, you could have stayed at home and done that. Well. I think on this note, scores will keep trickling in as, um, as the night goes on, and you can be sure to check those out on Bridge Winners if you're curious. There's a Fantasy League, so on Bridge Winners, there is a Vanderbilt Fantasy Bracket. They do this for all of the big team events, and you can head over there and sign up. I mean, you can't sign up anymore. It's over. <laughs> Um, but they do this like the day before the event starts. So you got to be quick on the trigger to get your votes in for who's going to win. Here is, where is um, mine? I can pull up mine. I am down here somewhere. There we go. This is me. Oh my god, I do have Hill winning the thing. <laughs> This could be a disaster. I mean, it's already pretty bad. Ash got knocked out in the first round. I had them winning, making it all the way through to the final four. But V8 says Kev was on the Milne team. Kev. Let's see, where are they? Oh, Kev being Kevin Rosenberg. Yes, he is. I still have no idea what's going on with that team. Finn Klesnik is playing with uh, some Asaf Yakutieli. I think Rosenthal is going to lose to Rombo. You're unsubscribing? <laughs> nice, nice. I approve. I think everyone can make fun of my bracket as much as you want. Um, but these are my picks. I got a lot of the upsets right, at least as far as... Um, as far as I recall. So far, like Hammond, we picked them. Wolfson did 
come through. Rombo, we picked. Simpson, I got the 16-17 matchup correct. Hoskins, I think they're currently leading. Picked Kane over Milner. But anyway, well, this was a fun day. We will be back again tomorrow for some more exciting action. Uh, thanks to all of the new viewers. If you are new viewers on Twitch, I know that I haven't gotten a lot of Twitch followers or new Twitch followers, um, but it's free on Twitch. You can just hit that follow button below the stream and that would be cool if you wanted to support me. Uh, always helps to have bigger numbers on the stream page of some kind. But we had a lot of viewers. This was uh, super fun. I will be back again tomorrow doing more commentary. And I will probably try and get here a little bit early and ask you guys in the chat which matches you want to see me um, cover. There should be four matches live tomorrow. So out of the um, 16 teams and eight total matches, there should be four of them that we can take a look at. There's probably going to be, oh my God, how do I get here? Um, there's probably going to be another poll. Oh yeah, here we go. Jan is already all over it. She has posted a poll on bridge winners. You can definitely vote there to make sure that your team and, and your matchups get onto Vugraph. And then when I get here early, probably five or 10 minutes before the start of the round in the morning, I will put up a little poll and chat to see which match you guys want to actually see. Um, and we'll be doing that all week. So thanks for hanging out and tuning in. All right, V8 will be asleep at the start of gameplay, but I know what you want to watch. So I will mentally add in an extra vote for you for the Hans team. How's that sound? Is that fair? Hopefully. Hopefully that sounds fair. Uh, yeah, that, that's going to wrap up stream for today. So as usual, thanks for hanging out, everyone. Hopefully you all have a good day. And hopefully I'll see you, most of you back here 